Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday night, January 23rd, 2017. Uh, before we get into uh, the first item on the agenda, what I'd like to do is Arlington has lost a really sweet soul, a sweet angel, um, Courtney Lynn Jones, uh, 25 years old. Uh, known her since she was pretty much a baby. Her mom, Robin, and her grandparents, Marilyn and Richard, or as Marilyn says, my Richie. She uh, is extremely active in Arlington Pop Warner, in Arlington Community Theater, in madrigals, singing, acting, and s such a, a positive soul, and I uh, have a pretty active, like everybody else, Facebook account, and, and I'm gonna say 75% of the postings that came through were for, from people that I know and videos that I was fortunate to be there, but then also a lot of people I didn't know who, who shared a lot of love for her and also really um, rallied with Courtney and her family um, in her truly courageous battle uh, against cancer as other loved ones have gone through. So um, on behalf of my colleagues um, who asked and joined with me in doing this tonight, um, we want to extend to her mom, Robin, um, and her grandparents, Marilyn, Marilyn and Richard, our deepest, deepest condolences, and just have a very short uh, moment of silence. Thank you, and uh, I also want to thank the town manager. A lot of people have contacted me. Uh, Courtney had a, f a rare form of liver cancer, which the color is green. Some of you may have seen across Arlington, Courtney Strong in green with shamrocks. I've been contacted by 20, 30 people thanking me for lighting up Town Hall green. I had nothing to do with it. Okay. <laughs> I would like to say that I did, but I, I do want to thank our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, and Patsy Kramer and others who were in involved in uh, putting that together. So I don't mean to start on such a somber note, but if Courtney were here tonight, you all would be giggling and laughing, laughing and she'd be entertaining you like crazy. So um, for Courtney, we're, we're gonna move on to uh, the Board of Selectmen first agenda item, which is a sort of bittersweet um, <laughs> a proclamation. A, a couple here in Arlington who has been, um, I, I, I can't even begin to say how they've helped the town of Arlington, campaigns, nonprofits, et cetera, in, in terms of their, their longstanding business. Um, I'm very happy for them in terms of the next step that, that Chuck and Nancy are taking. Kind of a little bit sad for all of us because I always knew where I could find you all from Monday through Friday. <laughs> so that's the bittersweet part. But uh, Mr. Greerly had asked um, for this particular agenda item, so I'd like to turn, to, turn it over to Mr. Greerly. Kevin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And first of all, my apologies to Chuck and Nancy. We were supposed to do this two weeks ago when I was sick. And tonight my sister-in-law, Carol, who really is the one that started this, she's sick. I think she got whatever I had before. But... Um, there was a letter in the Advocate this past week, I don't know if y'all saw it, but it was by my good friend Jimmy Nicholson. And he was thanking the volunteers who have worked at the Boys and Girls Club Christmas Tree, their major fundraiser. They sold out like a week and a half before Christmas again. But the quote was something like, the world is hugged by the arms of volunteers. And the arms that we're about to read this proclamation for have certainly hugged this town of Arlington, and especially Arlington Heights. So uh, let's bring them right up to the microphone to embarrass them even more, <laughs> Chuck and Nancy. And the rest of you, we do public proclamations here. This comes from the old tradition where a town crier the next day after a selectman's meeting would proclaim what had been decided that night. So there's a lot of whereases and now therefore you're doing the whereases. Don't make me call on any of you individually. Let's have it nice and loud now. So here we go. Whereas. Charles J. Pappas Jr. is the founder and co-owner of Arlington Swifty Printing, a small family-run commercial retail and trade print shop in Arlington, Massachusetts, established in 1980. Chuck attended Arlington High School, Northeastern University, where he started a nightclub directory publishing a listing of events at local nightclubs, and eventually Suffolk University, where he studied journalism and communications, and... Whereas. Very nice. Chuck opened up a small office in East Arlington in 1980, purchasing a phototype setter to do the pre-press pre -press 
production of the magazine, Disco Club News Entertainment New England. Disco Club, Chuck. Shows <laughs> my age. He, he's, he stopped publishing the magazine after one year, focusing solely on typesetting and printing and... Whereas... Chuck eventually moved his business to Arlington Heights, where in the past 10 years, the focus has shifted to a business-to-business -business commercial printer. Today, Arlington Swifty Printing has become a leader in digital technology and workflow for the small print shop and... Whereas... Chuck married Nancy after they worked together, <laughs> becoming one of Arlington's most recognizable and impactful couples, maintaining not only their business, but also their Grand View Road home in Arlington. Chuck and Nancy have adopted a responsible business model over these past five years, with a focus to using recycled paper and purchasing equipment that leaves a smaller impact on the world. This model includes not just green sustainability, but a deeper quest to find products and vendors with similar philosophies and products produced in a responsible manner. And whereas Chuck and Nancy were instrumental in helping revive Arlington First Lights, transforming their parking lot into a petting zoo with pony rides and photos with Santa for children and families as part of this December celebration of Arlington businesses. Arlington Swifty Printing has been a paragon of local charity, supporting the Arlington Educational Foundation, Trivia Bee, and numerous other nonprofit and school organizations. And the last one, yes. Chuck, as former president and longtime member of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce, has contributed to building and maintaining a vibrant business community. Chuck and Nancy have long enjoyed retreats to St. Augustine, Florida. It's almost over. <laughs> and look forward to spending their well-earned retirement years there. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Board of Selectmen, do congratulate and thank Chuck, Nancy, and Swifty Printing for their many contributions to the town and do hereby declare this 23rd day of January of 2017 to be Charles and Nancy Pappas Day throughout the town of Arlington and ask all citizens to pay heed thereto. Well, thank you. I've got a party to give for the town of Arlington which amazingly enough came from St. Augustine. <laughs> we were down there walking around, there's a museum of oddities, and we went in, and there was a picture. Well, first if we went in, he asked us where we were from, we said Arlington. He said, wait a minute, don't go any place. <laughs> he goes in the back room, comes out, he says, I've got a picture for you, all the way from Arlington, uh -huh. the junior high west, with A. Henry Odison as a student, Wow. Oh, that's student. awesome. Wow. And all the signatures. I was going to say, I saw the signatures. Of all the students from that. 1942. Wow. That we had hanging in the store. And that's Henry right there. Uh -huh. so, so we had to purchase it. We've had it hanging in the store. Just a lot of people have come in, so I'd like to present it to the town. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Hug and a kiss there, Nance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Much better. Thank you. Although I just gave it to you. But. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. That's awesome, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's great. With Addison himself in it. Oh. Our director of the chamber is here. Perhaps Beth. I'll be very quick. My name is Beth Locke. I'm the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. This is Kathleen Darcy from Cambridge Savings Bank, a member of the executive board of the chamber. And we'd just like to take a quick minute to recognize Chuck and Nancy. As Kevin said, Chuck um, and Nancy have been involved in the chamber for many years, Chuck being the former president in 99, 2000, around then. 
We couldn't Does that sound right? That. <laughs> <laughs> Carol and I bugged Kevin way back. I think <laughs> I went through some records today. It looked like around 99, 2000. So I just wanted to take a quick moment to recognize you with this certificate and a gift. It's a certificate of appreciation presented to Chuck and Nancy Pappas of Arlington Swifty Printing for your many years of membership and service to the Arlington Chamber of Commerce and with recognition of your contributions and dedication to the Arlington business community. Thank I'd like you. to thank you very much. Thank you. And, and a little gift from South Arlington. And, and thank you for that great find. Um, I'm going to, uh, with the town manager and perhaps Mr. Kiro, um, uh, sort of strategize on an appropriate place for it. I'm kind of thinking maybe at the Audison, yeah. but um, if I could, Mr. Kiro, uh, with the town manager, uh, assign the two of you stewards of, of that fantastic uh, yeah, sure. photograph and, and see maybe you know where the, our colleagues on the school committee and Dr. Bodie think might be an appropriate place to have that hang because I think that will inspire so many questions especially if you can have a nameplate or something other and say this is you know Mr. Audison when he was here at the Audison or the west and the east is up when I went to the school. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. So um, I, I can see some really innovative teachers up at Audison Middle School. Um, really kind of maybe building a lesson or two around this, uh, or, or not. I'm not trying to dictate any <laughs> curriculum. I'm the, I'm the we're the town side, they're the school side. But I think that's like fantastic. That is so fantastic. I'm so excited. I worked in the library as a teenager in high school. So things like that, when you find them in the archive, you're like, bingo. I mean, that's. <laughs> I, was, I noticed the dress code. I did. And thank you uh, once again uh, upon your yep. moving on that you uh, give something back to the town of Arlington. I really do appreciate it. Um, and with that, we'll move on to the consent agenda, agenda item two, uh, minutes of meetings, January 9, 2017, a request for a special one-day beer and wine license from Lisa Padula, Arlington Center for the Arts, on January 28th. 2017 at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for the Arlington Center for the Arts Gala. Then we have reappointments, all terms to expire January 31st, 2020. Board of Youth Services, Mary DeCourcy, Joan Lyric, Carleen Newell, Commission on Arts and Culture, Carla Dorado, Amy Tabiner, Commission on Disability, Susan Janes, Conservation Commission, Eileen Coleman, Michael Esnani, Historical Commission, Diane Schaefer, Parks and Rec Commission, Shirley Kniff, Redevelopment Board, Andrew Bennell, Trust Fund Commission, uh, Damon Barglo, as well as a request for change of hours for all alcohol license on behalf of Not Your Average Joe, Joe's Lauren Dexter Manager. Is there a mo motion to approve, Mr. Greeley? Uh, we need to uh, take the minutes of January 9th separate, uh, Madam Chair, but oh. otherwise I move approval on all other items. Okay. Second. Mr. Greeley moves approval on agenda items three, four, and five, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Is there any discussion on any of these? These are all reappointments. I don't see any of our reappointees, which we do not require them to be here tonight. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Move approval of the minutes. Move approval by Mr. Dunn on agenda item two, second by Mr. Kiro. Any further discussion questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. 301 on that. And that brings us to agenda item six. Uh, we have, do we have, we don't have a specific time. Two public hearings. Uh, the first one, they're both on behalf of an Eversource petition. First one, Lantern Lane at Hutchinson Road. Um, and here's a stranger, Miss Jackie Duffy, um, on behalf of, I'll let you say your name and company. I'm right. Jackie Duffy, Eversource Energy. Uh, we want to install 103 feet on Lantern Lane in Arlington, and it's to um, improve the uh, system out there. Right now we are out there because the system failed. We should be gone in about two weeks, weather permitting. Move approval subject to conditions as set forth. Moved by Mr. Greeley. Second. Second by Mr. Carroll. Uh, before I call on my colleagues, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone here for Eversource petition on Lantern Lane at Hutchison Road? Um, any Comments, questions from my colleagues? 
Uh, if not, on a motion by Mr. Greerly, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We go to agenda item seven, another Eversource petition. Jack, Ms. Stuffy. Hi, um, Jackie Duffy, Eversource Energy. We'd like to install 37 feet of conduit on Morningside Drive in Arlington, and this also is to improve the system. Is there a motion? Moves approval subject Moved to conditions. Mr. Dunn, seconded by Second. Mr. Greerly. Again, it's a public hearing. Is anyone here for the Eversource petition uh, for Morning, Morningside Drive at Bradley Road? Um, if not, any questions or comments by my colleagues? On a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Greerly. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Good to see you again, Thank Jackie. You too. Bye bye. Thank you. We did have a couple names on the sheet. We did. Oh, I guess we do have some names. Um, if you haven't signed up for Citizens Open Forum because you weren't aware <coughs> of that, that's fine. Um, just let your presence be known after that. It's for anything that's not on our agenda tonight. If it's something you want to speak to that's on the agenda when we get to that, um, uh, We'll call on anyone who would like to uh, express their sentiments to the board. For citizens open forum, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board should neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Who do we have first on the list, Marie? We need Brooks Harrison. Brooks? Um, oh, if you can come to the microphone and just say your name and address for the precinct, even though I already said most of your name. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brooks Harrelson, Precinct 16. Uh, I'm actually here for a discussion of the Sanctuary Town item to add some information in, to that so I can do that now or then. Then would be better, Thank just you. so we can That's just keep it all hearing. together. So if, if, if you're here on an agenda item, when we get to that, it's, it's best that we get all the information at the same time or what, you know, input, whatever you want to. Who do we have next, Marie? Galvin. Galvin. Galvin or Calvin? Oh, Heather Calvin. That was also for the agenda item. Okay. <coughs> Megan, I don't, can't read her last Is there a Megan? That's on street. Okay. And then there's, um, looks like a Becky. 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 Yes. Okay. And the other one, Lynette Martin. Okay. And Bill Gardner. Agenda item. Okay. Is there anyone here who wished to speak under Citizen Open Forum that didn't sign up? If not, Citizen Open Forum is closed. <coughs> and the only distinction with that is if somebody wants to come in, it's not on our agenda, so we can't really vote on it. It's something that we receive. And several of you are here for something that is on our our agenda, which means we could could not take any action. That's why we kind of ferret it out that way. So I don't want anyone to feel I'm making you stay longer than you have to. Not that you don't want to stay here all night. <laughs> we'll move on to agenda item eight, a uh, request for handicapped parking sign at 32 Pheasanton Road. Is there a motion? Move, move approval. Move approved by Mr. Greerly, seconded by? Second. But is, is, that, is he here? Yes, he's here. Is Mr. Makaras here? Yes. How are you, sir? Do you want to come to the microphone and just, you don't have to, but it's, and if you can just say your name and address for the record and whatever you would like to present to the board. Al McCarris, uh, 32 Fessenden Road, and I'm trying to get a handicapped space on the side of my house, so I have trouble parking there. I think you know where I live anyway. Yes, I'm your neighbor. <laughs> yes, Al. Uh, between the teachers and functions at the gym, everybody parks there, and I have trouble parking. I can't walk that far mm -hmm. without getting out of breath. Mm -hmm. And if I could get a space outside the side of my house, I don't use the front door. Pheasant and Road's a private way. If I park in front, fire engine can't get by, trash trucks can't get by, and I've done that before in the lost mirrors off my vehicle. Mm. So I generally park on the side. I have two vehicles. My wife has one, which goes inside the garage. I park in back of it. I have to get out early in the morning and put it out on mine out on the street so she can get out so I don't have to go up and down. So I have a problem with stairs too. Mm -hmm. So if I could get a space out there, I'd appreciate it. Okay, um, motion by Mr. Greerly, seconded by <coughs> Mr. Dunn. Mr. Greerly? Uh, are some of the parking spaces around your house being taken up by the wild parties at the Mahan residence? Uh, 
<laughs> no. Well, no, no, but I'll tell you. Quincy still Street, favor this, though. Quincy Street, a lot of the spaces get taken up by Jimmy's help. Jimmy's, yeah. They're not allowed to park in the lot. Yeah. And they all park up on Quincy Street. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank um, you, Madam Chair. Uh, anyone <coughs> else here for agenda item eight? Uh, any questions, comments by my colleagues? And a motion by Mr. Gurley, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Good to see you. Thank Good, you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, Good night. night. Thank you, Marie. Next, we have agenda item nine, a uh, request for a third space on street overnight parking at 37 Brentwood Road. We do have a <coughs> report from Officer Corey Rateau on behalf of the Arlington Police Department. Uh, is there a motion by my colleagues? Mr. Dunn? Uh, I move that we follow the recommendation of the police report and, uh, and not issue a, a permit. Not issue a third one. Okay, is there a second? Second. By Mr. Kiro. Uh, is anyone here, Ms. Uh, if you could just come to the microphone, say me your name and address for the record. Harry Lipson, 37 Brantwood Road. Uh, we live in a house that was uh, built before cars, and it's up on the elevated side on a ledge on Brantwood Road. And my adult son has moved home and has been living with us now and probably will for another year or so. He has a car, and uh, rather than get tickets, it would be we have 130 feet of frontage space in front of our house. We don't block any other uh, houses or since we have a lot of frontage, but it's just way down below on the street. So that's the reason for the request. Mr. Dunn? Uh, I'm really, I am sympathetic. I would, if um, I felt like I had a free hand, I would approve more of these than come across. We put it on the uh, ballot, specifically asking the town whether or not they wanted to permit overnight parking, and it lost in every single precinct. Yeah, I had actually even been hoping that uh, we'd get like one or two precincts that say yes, and then you know I'd start doing like overnight experiments, like let, doing permits. Sure, but it lost for what it's rate. worth, when it snows, we all go down to Russell to park down there, and and we're never, yep. in, in, you know, blocking plows or anything. So it's just. Uh, normal nights that we'd request. I understand, this. but I'm still going to vote no because I'm going to respect the, the voters. I understand. On that one. But th I wanted you to understand a little bit about why I'm doing it. I understand. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, any further comments, questions? On a motion by Mr. Dunn of no action, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now get to what I think a majority of you are all here for. Again, you're welcome to stay to the very end. Um, we have... Um, for warrant articles for discussions, I want to make the distinction that our warrant articles, which are placeholders to go before town meeting to discuss and get votes from our town meeting members of what direction the town should or should not take or what action it should or should not take, is still open until, I believe, January 29th. 27th. 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 I apologize. January 27th. Um, the next four warrant, article, warrant articles for discussion <coughs> are... Uh, topics that have come to the Board of Selectmen, us individually and collectively, uh, conversations with, with the town manager, uh, and basically what we're doing here tonight, we're not having warrant article hearings per se, we're having these are proposed warrant articles, who should the proponent or proponents be, um, and then whoever we decide on the first warrant article, you know, to take a certain action, any vote that comes here tonight will basically say, okay, who's filing in this? And then after January 27th, in the month of February and March, and hopefully early March, by early March, that's when the Board of Selectmen for warrant articles that through our town bylaws and codification that we should hear, you know, money article would go to the Finance Committee. Um, sometimes there's warrant articles where the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee weigh in because it's a financial issue, but it's also a policy issue. Um, Board of Selectmen deals largely in part with policy. Um, and anyone correct me if I'm in, you know, encapsulating this wrong. So I only say that um, to the sense of we will be having warrant article hearings for each of these four agenda items. So tonight's purpose is basically to you know, stop the first cog in the wheel to get the process going, um, hear from the proponents. Some proponents may say, you know, we would like to follow this on our behalf, 
and when it comes before the Board of Selectmen or any other entity, we would appreciate a unanimous vote, or there may be some war on articles that, you know, the Board of Selectmen collectively joins with citizens, Board of Selectmen collectively joins with the town manager, or some, and I'm not trying to limit the discussion, it could be something else, because um, we truly have not discussed any of these uh, beforehand with the exception of um, when these issues have been raised to my colleagues, um, we've had individual discussions with the town managers and other department heads. So I hope I've kind of set the framework for, any, would any of my colleagues like to uh, comment on that, Mr. Dunn, uh, Vice uh, Chairman? Just really briefly, uh, like I, I just think, it, like I, I think you said this, but I just think it's worth saying a different way. Um, what we're deciding tonight is what's going to be on the agenda for town meeting, which is going to be on the warrant, which is also known as what's going to be on the warrant for town meeting. We're also, and so town meeting is going to be the one that actually votes yes or no on any of this. But not only between here and there, there's also the question of what actual language is the motion that we're going to put forward and talk about at town meeting, and we're not even talking about that tonight. Mm -hmm. That's going to be at the hearing. So that tonight is just about what do we want on the agenda, mm -hmm. and the actual contents thereof we're going to talk about at a future date. Exactly, and, and the last thing I would comment is if for some reason the Board of Selectmen um, does not <coughs> choose to be a sponsor or co-sponsor of any of these four warrant articles, that does not mean they cannot be filed. Somebody else could file somebody it. Somebody else could file it, and somebody else could be watching this at home and say, well, I, I'd rather put a warrant article that says this language. As long as you get it in by January 27th, um, everybody's good to go on that. Uh, I think that's it. I think that sounds right, right, Mr. It's Chaplain? Right on. So, it's right on. Um, for the uh, first discussion for a warrant article, um, I don't know if you want to start, Mr. Chaplain. Okay, it's um, we're going to take them one by one. Uh, sanctuary town status. Ready? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so, this conversation uh, regarding Arlington considering sanctuary town status, frankly, began uh, the second week of November after Election Day with a number of town residents reaching out to me and I'm sure reaching out to members of the board and probably discussing amongst themselves um, the, the matter of whether or not Arlington should consider itself to be a sanctuary town. Uh, and some of those <coughs> immediate discussions started to revolve around what were the current police policies within Arlington and then also what federal funds did Arlington currently receive that may or may not be impacted depending on uh, a decision to be made. Um, so I, f I feel like in the past few months, I, I've learned quite a bit from talking with the police chief and with neighboring communities and with uh, folks living in Arlington about uh, sanctuary town status. Um, that said, I, I, I don't think I can sit here tonight and tell anybody what the impacts of um, the current president's policies will be on communities that choose to designate themselves as sanctuary towns. I know um, comments have been made that towns or cities that go down this path will have their federal funding in jeopardy if they choose to go down this path, and our total uh, federal grants for both town and schools is approximately $5 million a year. So um, again, I can't say with any certainty that there will be no impact or that there will be an impact, but I think it's important to know that as part of the dialogue. Um, going further, if the chair indulges uh, Chief Ryan's here tonight, and I, I'd like him, uh, if you're okay with it, to talk a little bit about what the current policy of the Arlington Police Department is revolving around matters with becoming a sanctuary town uh, and, and go from there if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Chief Ryan. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Honorable members of the board, thanks for having me. Um, you know, it's an important conversation. I'm glad, I'm <coughs> glad it's on the agenda tonight because I, I think it's important to have these conversations publicly. Um, as the manager said, uh, as a result of a lot of queries from uh, citizens, we've done our homework as to Really, what uh, what has occurred over the past? We look. We did a five-year look back in Arlington at all of our cases involving um, ICE detainers. There has been one, and uh, that's the uh, past five full calendar years. There's been none year to date in 2017. That said, you know I think that's important information to have. That said, the policies and the practices of the Arlington Police Department. Based on what I've read, uh, you know, because I don't really know what a sanctuary city is. I don't know what the clear definition is. But I've looked at some trust acts of neighboring uh, jurisdictions. I've looked at some, some other language uh, and done some research. The way we 
conduct our duties and, and the policies and the mission of the Arlington Police Department essentially are one and the same of, of a sanctuary city. We, we are a sanctuary city without having given, our, given ourselves that, that sort of label. Um, we, it's not in our wheelhouse to enforce immigration laws. We don't train our police officers to enforce immigration laws. We don't ask people their immigration status, ever. The only time it comes up is when somebody's under arrest for a, a crime. And so in the one instance where it did occur in the past five years, this person had committed a felony, a violent, um, a felony assault and battery involving uh, a dangerous weapon. And when that person was uh, booked at the Arlington Police Station, his fingerprints were scanned into a digital scanning device. Uh, when those, and, and part of that process is to uh, get a, uh, a uh, uh, identification, positive identification. And um, when we scan those fingerprints, they go out to a number of federal agencies. In this case, it came up that there was a, a, an ICE detainer for this person who had previously been deported uh, for having an unlawful border crossing on the southern border, uh, had come back into the United States, committed a felony here in Arlington, and uh, we became aware of the ICE detainer. Uh, the federal immigration officials chose not to enforce it that night because he was in our custody and he was transported to the Cambridge District Court the following morning. Whether they ever chose to enforce that ICE detainer, we don't know, you know what the disposition of that matter was. So uh, the, the, the point of this dialogue is that the policies, the mission, and the practices of the Arlington Police Department amount to a sanctuary city. So you can rest comfortably that that's the way we're conducting our duties. Whether you, know, you all choose or the community chooses to uh, take the symbolic move of adding the label to our community, you know, that's, we don't really have an opinion on that. What's most important to us is that uh, our fair and impartial approach to policing is uh, alive and well and we're committed to that, to that mission and that philosophical approach to policing and no federal agency or federal policy or, or, or president will change our <coughs> philosophical approach, approach to uh, policing in Arlington. Happy to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Dunn? No. Um, Go ahead. I, I, so I, I think you answered this already, but just for the sake of clarity, is there anything that you see, in, or I mean, even if you, after the discussion, if you hear something that you think is, uh, that would affect the way you and your officers can do your job? And so, like, is, is there something that you perceive right now that if we took up one path or another on the trust, or like becoming a trust city, or a trust town, excuse me, uh, would it have an impact on the way you police, or would it make it easier or more difficult for you to? Yeah. It would have no impact on the way we right. conduct our duties. If your opinion of that ever changes, please let me know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Carroll? Thank you. Um, and thank you, Chief. I think we all recognize that we have a very enlightened police department, and we appreciate um, the approach. And I think that the question we have here is about putting a, 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 an article on the warrant that would allow um, us and town meeting to actually endorse the, the, the uh, current behavior of, of, of the police department. It looks though, as I'm, as I'm looking at, at the language in front of us in the town council's memo, we have two alternate pieces of language and it doesn't seem to all actually um, pertain to policing. I, I see um, uh, in the second version uh, something around using town resources for the purpose of gathering information regarding the citizenship, immigration status, ethnicity, national origin, religious affiliation for discriminatory purposes. That sounds like that goes beyond policing. Is that, is that correct? With your permission, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Mr. Kuro, uh, the <clears throat> second set of language that you see uh, stems out of a warrant article proposal by a town resident uh, interested in codifying some version of a trust act in Arlington. The trust yep. acts are fairly comprehensive. Yeah. Um, it's certainly possible that there might be other means of gathering this type of information, uh, although I'm not aware of what they would be. If the, there's not a law enforcement effort to go out and try to gather that type of information, I'm not sure maybe somebody else could speak to how that information would be gathered with the caveat that I think it's important to note that it's the gathering of that information for a discriminatory purpose. We wouldn't want to exclude any town department or officials from gathering evidence for uh, a non-discriminatory discriminatory purpose. Right. Um, 
and I think that's very clear from uh, the Trust Act uh, ordinances that some folks are trying to base uh, town meeting action on. I only asked that question because I know one thing that we discussed a little bit at our selectmen's retreat, and I, I, I think um, this was kind of on me, and I haven't uh, <laughs> enacted it, was that we were going to take a look at all of our forms and some of our forms for licenses. We do currently ask about immigration uh, status and such, and I don't know if some of that comes down from ABCC or if it's um, or whatnot. So I didn't know if if that is encompassed in. So that's a good example. A lot of our forms uh, do come from the ABCC when we process alco alcohol license uh, licenses. And so we would have limited discretion with respect to some things and maybe some uh, documentation that the school department needs with respect to, to students and th that, that may not directly ask those kind of questions but may contain some data that's uh, potentially controversial. But again, I think the key piece is that I I'm not sure that any of those types of um, sources of data would be used for a discriminatory purpose because it seems to me fairly clear, and I'm sure there's some folks here to talk about it uh, uh, here with us tonight, that these trust acts are really trying to make sure that folks aren't going out canvassing, trying to affirmatively identify, you know, these are folks whose immigration status is not, um, you know, is not legal um, for some punitive purpose um, rather than trying to make sure that they understand the needs of people in the community. Thank you. I'm just trying to get my arms around it. We have two alternatives here for warrant language, and if this board were to go forward and place the language on the warrant, I just want to understand the qualitative differences between between the two. It looks like the first is is more general, but yeah. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Mr. Grayley? No, that was it. That takes care of it. Thank you. Okay. Um, Chief will, will be on standby for, unless you have any comment right now in terms yep. of going nope. forward, but um, if there's anything that um, we need your, you know, you have some comment on, just let me know and I'll call you in the next appropriate order. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair. What I'll, uh, Mr. Chapelain, is that all in terms of yep, from I'm good. town? Okay, um, and what I'll do now is, um, I think what you've heard is there's two different <coughs> versions of the language, uh, if you'd like to, uh, come forward. I believe Mr. Mr. Harrelson was first. Uh, even though I say your name, please say name and address for the record. If you could just, and this board will take no offense. Um, there may be some citizens who say we want this to be a citizen-driven article only. Um, if you could speak to whatever you want, but I, we, I think myself and my colleagues would be interested into the two versions of the language. If you um, like one more than the other, want to advocate for one more than the other, or something else, as well as your input on should this be a, a citizen-sponsored article, or if you have an opinion in terms of whether this board or, or some other entity should also co-sponsor it. So name and address for the record, sorry. Hi, my name is Brooks Harrelson. I'm in Precinct 16. Uh, <clears throat> I'm also a member of the Vision 2020 Diversity Task Group for whom I am speaking tonight. Um, the Vision 2020 Diversity Task Group um, <clears throat> wants the issue of Arlington being a sanctuary town considered and would support the selectmen putting forth such a warrant article to town meeting. Uh, there have been a number of issues raised for and against such uh, an article. Um, probably the most... Um, the, uh, the biggest one has to do with the possible loss of funding. Uh, I would like to refer everyone to a Washington Post article that was issued on January 18th, which is a very nice analysis of what it means to be a sanctuary city and the possible implications of it. In particular, I refer to a legal opinion that cites a Supreme Court ruling that funding can only be withheld if actions are relevant to the federal interest in the project, thus only funding specific to immigration activities can be withheld for sanctuary cities. Uh, secondly, uh, as Chief Ryan has mentioned, the Department of Homeland Security declined to enforce on that day. It is a Department of Homeland Security statement that complying with those requests is entirely voluntary on the part of the town. There is much more information in this article about the possible effects. The diversity task group would very much support 
um, the selectmen going forward with a warrant article to town meeting with certainly advice from town council on these issues that I've raised. Thank you. Thank you. And, and just the court reporter and me, no one has to ascribe to this, but um, we're going to be, or whoever's going to be presenting this, uh, it will be a sanctuary town um, request. And it, it's just the housekeeping court reporter and me. So you don't have to, it, I just don't want people to get confused or say city, so, um, so sanctuary town. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let everyone speak, but I just, for the people who signed up, was Heather, who is next after Mr. Harrelson? Okay. Uh, was it Heather? Heather Calvin. McGalvin? Calvin. Galvin, is she here? If you can just say your na name and address for the record, even though I've already... Hi, Heather Calvin. I just want to lend uh, my support to the idea of bringing this before town meeting from the uh, selectmen. Uh, I think that the support of these efforts in other communities near ours has brought it to um, the attention of many people in this room. And I think that uh, one of the most interesting things to me about this is um, making known and public within our community what the practice of our progressive police department is. Um, not that we are asking for a change in that, but I think the value to public safety and making that understood so that immigrants, undocumented or otherwise, do not fear contacting our police when they need help. Um, I think it's a worthy topic um, in terms of community dialogue and discussion and awareness, and I would urge you to support that. Thank you. Thank you. Next we had, uh, I can't remember. Megan. 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 Name and address for the record. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, um, Megan Bailey, 68 Milton Street. I am uh, so Could you? Sorry. Yeah, actually, you can just grab it, pull it down a little bit, and speak up. And thank you very much. There's millions watching at home. <laughs> <laughs> we want them all to hear you. Um, so mm -hmm. Megan Bailey, 68 Milton Street. Um, I'm here in support of um, Arlington as a town sanctuary, um, and I'm just here to give a little bit of my opinion. Um, so for me, Arlington is a town that symbolizes much for myself and my husband. Um, it's not only a home for us, it's a place where we are proud to live because of its strong sense of community. Arlington has welcomed us since we've moved here four years ago. Since then, I've seen people of all backgrounds come together, clean up Spy Pond. Um, I've, had, I've come to appreciate the local family-owned businesses, and many of them are diverse. Um, I've made new friends here and I've seen my street become more diverse and I'm a very proud resident of Arlington as a result. Um, and based on the current, um, what's happening you know, with the president, um, I don't want him to break up this community by threatening to round up immigrants through racial profiling, detention, and de deportation. Um, I think Arlington is a community that values our diversity and is a home to a diverse group of people that hold family value, values close to their hearts, just as America has been home to families of immigrants throughout its history. Um, and I'm asking the board to seriously consider standing up um, against a regime of fear and insecurity and provide immigrants with the security of making Arlington a sanctuary town. Thank, Thank you. you. Then I, was it a gentleman's name that was there? Who was next? Becky. Oh, Becky. Oh, okay. Thank you. And then Annette Martin. Just name and address for the record. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lynette Martin. I'm a resident of Arlington at 18 Eustace Street. I'm also here as a chair of First Parish Arlington's diversity and inclusion group and a member of their racial justice coordinating committee. <clears throat> I would like to recommend that uh, this warrant be brought forth to town meeting. Uh, one, to stand by Arlington's commitment to diversity as demonstrated in our Vision 2020 task force, as well as uh, represented by the many restaurants and small businesses we have um, that may possibly have immigrants and possibly illegal immigrants working in them. Um, if we follow the procedures that uh, Chief Ryan brought to our attention, the progressive procedures that we have in town, but we don't declare them, then how will immigrants know that we are a welcome town, that they are safe here? And um, something that Chief Ryan was unable to measure 
is the crimes that are happening um, could be anything from domestic abuse, uh, illegal drugs, the crimes um, that are being committed but are not being reported because people might worry about reporting and their own status um, and, and don't know because we have not declared that they're safe, we have not marketed our progressive beliefs. Um, and just uh, as a reminder, as, um, as someone who is a member of these diversity task groups, um, that unless we are, unless we come from indigenous people, then um, we are all descended from immigrants or immigrants in this country, so. And then I have a, a question for Chief Ryan. Hi. Oh. <laughs> um, would the policing policy and practices you describe be in place if another chief were in, in place, were here in Arlington? In other words, how much of these policies rests on your discretion? I'm going to give you one bit of latitude there and definitely have the chief answer that. Yes. Um, but this is, we're talking about if a warrant article is going to be filed and, um, and I'm going to leave it to the chief in terms of any future chiefs. You can definitely answer that. Okay. But, but tonight we're just talking about who's going to file this warrant article, who's going to sponsor right. it. Is it going to be just citizens? Is it going to be a town department head in citizens? Is it going to be citizens in the board of selectmen? But okay. it, it, uh, the thank chief, you, and thank you for He popped up me. so quickly. I definitely <laughs> want to call on him to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, I just don't want to, die, you know, that's all. Sorry. Court reporter. Nice, nice to see you. Thank you for getting me in trouble with the chairwoman. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it's a great question, um, and some excellent points have been made. You know, I like to think it's become the fabric of the police department, and it, it's it's uh, it's a um, it's a way of thinking. It's a mindset. You know, community policing isn't a program, and it, it isn't a policy that I can point to. It's a mindset, right? And so that mindset is is in the fabric of the police department. And I would I would like to think that anybody that would replace me. Um, although I, you know, intend to stay here until my until I'm in a rocking chair, but uh, if I were to be hit by a bus, that <laughs> that that culture of the organization would would manifest itself uh, um, through any chief that might uh, replace me. Can I say within any, any degree of certainty that that you know I don't know, but that's that's why we have to have this chief for a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> if he'll have us. Um, was there any other name on the? Mr. Gardner? Bill Gardner? Oh, okay. Um, that's, thank you. Um, I think that's everyone that signed up on Citizens Open Forum. So if you could just come up one at a time. Any on the Sanctuary Town um, Warren article, just name and address for the record. Just make sure, as Mr. Dunn reminds me, there we go. Judy Weinberg, 39 Venner Road, Precinct 10. Um, I have been speaking with the Human Rights Commission, and I've also spoken with uh, Doug Hyman, Mr. Chapelain, and Chief Ryan about a warrant article which the Human Rights Commission has agreed to sponsor. Um, if we could get a dual sponsorship, that would be fabulous. Um, the wording on the sanctuary on the resolution is very broad, which again is just a placeholder. Um, but we have been doing some research in terms of what a sanctuary city is. It's not a legal definition, so there's no legal term. It's basically how it's interpreted by any town or city that wants to um, adopt it. And it basically says what Chief Ryan has explained is that you provide your services to your citizenship. You don't ask them questions. The only times that their, that their uh, status would come into play is if they were uh, in the system as having committed a, a, a crime. Um, there is no central database of sanctuary towns and cities. I've gone online to look for them. The only database that seems to be there, and it's not the most current, is being run by a, an organization that is very much against the idea of sanctuary cities. So it basically says these are sanctuary cities, you know, rebel against them. But um, in Massachusetts, there are, it's the sanctuary cities that have come forward are Amherst, Boston, Cambridge, Chelsea, Lawrence, Northampton, Orleans, Somerville, Springfield, and Holyoke. Um, and that list is growing. There was a big uh, meeting yesterday in Newton where they had a lot of conversation about it. Um, there's many sanctuary cities and towns across the country. Here's a map showing where they all are. California, um, pretty much the whole state right now has declared itself. So 
In terms of um, possibly jeopardizing federal funds, I think at some point it's get to, we're going to get to the point where most of the major metropolitan areas are going to have a, adopted this policy, and they just won't have too much money to go to the little towns. Um, there, Somerville, uh, Mayor Kurt Tony has been incredibly outspoken, and he's basically says, federal government, bring it on. We respect our, um, I mean, so he's, he said that some of it would sooner tighten, tighten its fiscal belt than sell out on its values. And I really think that that's who Arlington is, that yes, we may have $5 million in jeopardy, the money that we get. Um, I understand that it goes to um, the CDBG, which is a community development block grant, which is through HUD. The Arlington Housing Authority, the Infrastructure Improvement, and School Aid. That's where the $5 million goes from federal money. Um, and I, I mean, it's not an inconsiderable amount, but I do think that putting our money where our mouth is, those of us who, who went to the march this weekend realize that, you know, standing up for what you believe in is important. So I obviously support this. Thank you. Madam Chair. Ms. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Mr. Yeah. Dunn. Um, since you, from the Human Rights Commission, uh, and the, one of the two pieces of language we've got in front right. of us came from the Human Rights Commission. Yes, can that you, was the one I submitted. Can you speak to like whether why one is preferable to the other, or, or are they, you know, is it like two flavors of the same, you know, two flavors of chocolate, or is one of them much better than the other? Like I have, I kept. Well, the one that, that that we submitted is really very broad. The other one gets into more specifics. I. I thought that that was just the original placeholder and we were going to expand on it once we, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, okay. so we would expand on it. Mm -hmm. Attorney Hyam. Madam Chair, if I may, I, I just want to make clear that the two pieces of language, you have one um, article as uh, put together by the Human Rights Commission, which is fine. As the Board of Selectmen well knows, there's always a tension at town meeting between uh, specificity and broadness. So the broader an article, the more things that could in theory be uh, contemplated, but of course there's always the possibility that somebody says, well, is that really clear enough that that's what you meant we were talking about? And then specificity obviously has the downside of being a little bit more limited. I want to make clear that the uh, latter of the two options is my articulation of uh, some residents' efforts to duplicate the uh, Trust Act uh, that we see in Cambridge and in Boston, very specifically. The Trust Act is a very specific ordinance. We don't pass ordinances like that in uh, the town. Um, we don't have a city council system, obviously, so, so it's we a very, don't have ordinances. That's, that's right. right. So it's a very, mm -hmm. very different process, and it's just my attempt to capture uh, that. That's a fairly specific set of things that you're asking to do, even if it was articulated as resolution. So I just want to make it clear. Uh, that would not prevent, obviously, as, as you all have said, that uh, residents might articulate it on their own in a different manner um, through their own citizen sign petition. But I did want to try to capture the dialogue that was going on um, in these somewhat parallel efforts because I've had quite a few people calling my office about um, sanctuary uh, town sort of resolutions and separately um, the uh, trust acts very specifically. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for sort of weighing in on the two. I'm, again, from the legal background that Attorney Heim and I share, mm -hmm. um, if I had my druthers right now, to me, uh, less is more, more is less. Broader it's better. broader the better. Right. Well, um, yes, but but this is broad. not to limit anyone who comes up to speak. If you do have a preference, <laughs> uh, feel free to express it. Uh, we certainly want to hear that. I didn't mean to cut you off. Were you all? No, 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 no. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, is Ms. Barron, you want to a name and address for the record, even though we all know you. We all know you. Yeah, that's true. I can get it. Wait a minute. <laughs> Sherry Barron, um, 10 Raleigh Street, and I'm a member of the Human Rights Commission. I wasn't planning to speak, but um, I am in personally in favor of uh, giving Arlington the sanctuary town label. And I, someone made a point earlier, and I think that's exactly why, and <clears throat> that is, we found over the 21 years that I've been on the commission that we don't get a lot of complaints, and I think part of the reason is that there are people in this town who are immigrants, documented or undocumented, but they don't feel comfortable coming to the police or to <coughs> town hall because in their country that was not something that they did without some sort of recrimination. 
what I think is important to determine tonight, if possible, is we're, we're trying to figure out who should write it. I'd like to know what you think about which one would have more impact, coming from a group of 10 voters, the Human Rights Commission, or you folks. So maybe we can have a, you could discuss that, or that can be something that you can look at down the road, because the point here is that we want, to, we want it to happen. So who has a better shot of delivering the goods? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Greeley? Well, just on that, I kind of, I personally like the idea of co-sponsoring Human Rights Commission and the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mr. Kiro? Um, I, I think I would agree with uh, Mr. Greeley. I think this is very important. I mean, I, I can echo what, what um, Ms. Barron said. I don't talk about it a lot, but for several years I worked as a, a refugee resettlement counselor, and it's absolutely true that people who are fleeing um, very authoritarian regimes or, or regimes, you know, with oppressive circumstances do often have a suspicion of any governmental mm -hmm. authorities, police or, or um, otherwise. I think it's very important that it come from the leadership of the town. I think that the leadership of the police department has stepped up in their practices. I think it's important for us to also step out up and at least make a statement by placing this on the warrant now. We, we can discuss the specifics as we go through our hearing process and get to a town meeting. Personally, um, I have a strong preference to the, 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 the second set of language that's before us, though. Um, the, um, <clears throat> well, I, I very much, um, I have no problem with, with the, uh, the language put forward by the Human Rights uh, Commission. It specifically talks about undocumented residents, and I, I like the fact that the second set of language, the Trust Act uh, language, talks about all immigrants um, uh, being able to fully and safely participate in the civic and economic life of the town, and also talks about, um, uh, reaffirms our commitment to um, uh, uh, non-discrimination on the basis of citizenship, immigration status, ethnicity, national origin, religious affiliation. I think that it, it actually affirms uh, some of the values that, 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 the, um, that, that we have uh, really held dear for many years um, in, in this town. So um, I would like, I don't know if that was a motion, Mr. Grilly, or, or? Not yet, not uh, for me, but. I would ahead. like to move that we um, <clears throat> co-sponsor with the Human Rights Commission with their, with, with their uh, assent, um, a warrant article based on the second, the, the Trust Act version of the, um, of, of the language that is, that is in here, which does also reference a sanctuary community. It specifically um, references this as sanctuary community. Motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Second. Mr. Dunn. And I'm going to see if there's anyone else who wants to speak on this particular Warren article. I, I do want to say, and I apologize if I didn't articulate it the way that I meant it, the, this and the next three Warren articles um, that we'll discuss in terms of how they get inserted, um, I, I felt so strongly about it and kind of felt I have a sense of my colleagues in terms of, and along with the town manager, um, if for some reason we didn't sponsor any, co-sponsor any of these warrant articles, they would go before town meeting. Um, but because of this board's policy decisions that we've made in the past, uh, some have to do with, you know, a, you know debt exclusion, other um, that has happened in the past and could happen in the future, I wanted to put forth um, along with the town manager to, to the board of selectmen to say these are going in but I would would my colleagues which you have been and will continue to do consider whether um, we could and should um, or, or could not or should not co-sponsor these warrant articles with the original proponents because I really feel they're in line with you know when we sit down and talk about our goals and um, how we move into the future and keep Arlington the vibrant community that it is so I just if I didn't make that clear, um, and or to anyone else out there, you know, these are warrant articles that are ready to go, but just in conversations with the town manager and department heads and my colleagues wanted to make sure for these particular four, um, where there really is a strong, in my opinion, positive community statement, um, if the proponents were so kind that we could also co-sponsor it. Mr. Greeley? Did you have your hand up? I'm sorry. Uh, well, yeah, you just surprised me. But any, um, so uh, 
the, the, I'm just still a little confused whether we're calling it a trust act or a sanctuary uh, town, but the first point I'd like to make is we are, based on what Chief Ryan has told us, um, and that police do not actually um, uh, question immigration status, uh, and I'm proud of this town for that. Now, to make an, an official designation, and I hesitate to ask this question, but I'm going to anyhow. If we are designated a sanctuary town, are we giving a false impression we can provide more services than a town that isn't a sanctuary town for immigrants? You know, I see two, no, absolutely not, and I hate your guts, Kevin Greeley, uh, <coughs> for even asking the question. I don't know. Uh, if but you know, because we, we heard there's no definition of what a sanctuary town is. So I don't want to give a, uh, a false impression. Should we, if we're called a trust act, does that, we're still called a sanctuary town, I assume. Mr. Chapter, so oh, are you done? It, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I, I would say that that's a very good question, and I think the answer would lie in the details of what this board and then eventually town meeting actually adopts, and then further what we publicize and talk about if it was successfully adopted. I think we'd want to be very careful to make it crystal clear what it meant to be a sanctuary town or a, a trust act community so that there wasn't any confusion about some different level of services being offered. Yeah, because I think we should do it. I just want to be careful. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, name and address for the record, even though. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mel Goldsleep, co-chair of the Human Rights Commission. Um, at the Human Rights Commission meeting, we voted on the first language, which we recognized was very vague, and we figured it was a placeholder and that we would work with the citizens and we would come up with the final language, and Christine has permission to work with them on the final language. I want to say that as a private citizen, I, I agree for all the reasons Joe said that we should do the Trust Act because it is very specific. If you want people to trust you, you have to tell them what they're trusting you about. You can't expect someone who possibly doesn't have a great grasp on the English language and has no background in knowing what a sanctuary city is or sanctuary town is to know what we're guaranteeing. And so I think um, personally that we should go with the Trust Act. I don't know procedurally how that goes because we voted on the sanctuary town part versus Yes, but Excuse me. I mean, if, if you guys decide that it would have the most impact for you guys to sponsor it to begin with, then it probably doesn't matter. <laughs> but I just wanted to be clear about what, what we had already voted on. If we want to do something else, we would have to convene, I guess, before the 27th and do another vote. Okay. And then if, if, we, went, votes, if we went, which is where I'm leaning towards sort of the broader language, that allows us, when we get to town meeting, as you and others have said, it's a placeholder. And then when the board had the Warren article hearing and stated exactly what their vote would be, the placeholder's there, and then you hear our vote, and for some reason we didn't encapsulate for anyone um, particular language that you had hoped with the broad initial placeholder Warren article language, you could um, file a substitute motion mm -hmm. down on town meeting floor to say, you know, good job, selectmen or whoever, you got point one, two, three, four, but you got, forgot five. So you could file point five, mm -hmm. and, and then that would go on to it. So I know you're, you and just about everybody in the audience is very well versed with that, but just in case we do have, I see a few new faces here in the audience, sort of what the process and the protocol is. So right now, you know, we haven't gotten to exactly, if the board is going to vote, first of all, that we will co-sponsor it, and mm -hmm. then the second step. I'm just letting you know where I'm leaning right now, just in terms of you know my professional background. Mm -hmm. I kind of go to the broader because it allows us to. But uh, Attorney Heim, did you? If I can just be helpful in the debate, I, I do think that the uh, the language uh, put out by the Human Rights Commission is very good, and that it could encompass a lot of things that um, the Trust Act sort of contemplates. So I, I just hope that we don't get too um, uh, immersed in the Trust Act versus Sanctuary Town sort of status. I do think the Trust Act is a specific model that was mm -hmm. adopted and put forth by other communities. And I think if you have a broader definition, the thing that everybody should understand is that that could be include, allow for substitute motions that maybe try to take it away from 
a very specific resolution and make it a little bit broader. Whereas if you went with the Trust Act version, it would be harder to have a substitute motion maybe make it uh, broader. It would have to be a little bit tighter if you were going to try and change it. So I just want to be clear that I think that the first uh, language, the one that was adopted by the Human Rights Commission, could definitely encompass most of what the Trust Act language talks about. I just think it would be harder to go in the opposite direction. Mr. Greeley and then Mr. Carroll. So uh, uh, why don't we take the vote uh, whether this board favors co-sponsoring and then refer it to Doug and the Human Rights Commission and let them work on the wording and then it's brought back here and then we do the uh, move favorable action on the final wording. Uh, nope, that's not a good idea, I don't think. Adam. So with the, the, this wording has to be finalized by Friday. Right. This is the warrant article wording. Mm -hmm. Forgot that little thing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> no. Mr. Kiro. Well, I had a question for Ms. Goldside. Mm -hmm. You said that um, the commission had actually authorized the chair to work with others on the language. Was that yes. for the warrant article? Yes, for the final wording on the warrant article. But was that for the recommendation or for the warrant article? Does that mean that the chair is actually empowered to, to en endorse this alternate language on behalf yes. of the commission? If we were to vote the, the, the second version of this language, you're empowered by the commission? Uh, no, I was, uh, uh, wait. Okay. Yeah. So, Sorry. <laughs> I know you love public speaking, Christine. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Christine Carney, 98 Richard Road, co-chair of the Arlington Human Rights Commission. No, what we voted on at our last meeting was that um, we would work with Judy, with residents, on the draft of the Warren article that they submitted, they dra drafted. And we would come up with the final language on that. To be submitted to the warrant, though? Yes. Same thing. OK, so that could be this language, yes. potentially. Yeah. So it sounds like you have flexibility as well. There is flexibility. What? You were given flexibility, in other words. I was given flexibility. But Between now and Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. But specifically for the sanctuary town. Got we did it. not discuss the Trust Act. OK. Right. And, and that's why I was saying, in terms of yeah. we're kind of getting to step two. This is just step one. My advice to everyone would be, what I would like is put the broader in because it's in there and then all these subsequent conversations well, that have already happened will happen in the future. Then when the selectmen have the true warrant article hearing, that's when we have that broad placeholder in there that um, groups or individuals can come in and say, this is what I would like you to vote on um, and, and get more specificity or keep it broad. Mr. Dunn? Uh, I'd like to recommend a different motion, Joe, that I think gets to where we're trying okay. to go, which is uh, that the Board of Selectmen votes to put the something of, the, in, of this general nature on the, on the warrant, to co-sponsor it with the Human Rights, Rights Commission, Commission, and to have uh, empower the, uh, um, Doug to work with the Human Rights Commission. So whatever, figure out what flexibility Christine has we know what we want, or we're telling Doug what we want, and let them drive to the language that we actually need by Friday. I'm, I'm fine with drawing a motion and, 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 and accept, accepting that. With one caveat, uh, as I mentioned, I, the reason I like the second set of language isn't necessarily because of trust stack versus sanctuary town. It's because of the, the broader protections on, on basis of citizenship, okay. religious. So I'm going to make my motion. So I, first, I, Mr. Kiro's motion, seconded by Mr. Dunn, is withdrawn. We now have Mr. Dunn's motion, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Okay. So the intent, I believe, of this board, when we get to the actual thing, it, when we get, get to the actual uh, vote, is to get a uh, Sanctuary Town Trust Act uh, mo uh, discussion <laughs> happening at town meeting in the most productive way possible. Right. Is going to do it. The Human Rights Commission wants the same thing. We are going to co-sponsor something. The actual language of that, whichever one between the one and the two, the board has a preference for the direction that Joe is, is talking about, and we are empowering uh, Attorney Heim to actually hammer that out with the Human Rights Commission. That's my intent. That's my motion. Mr. Greeley does not look like he's happy. Because it's exactly what I said, and I got, <laughs> and I got no, it has to be done by Friday. What, what changed here in the last 10 minutes? So yes, I support this. <laughs> my first years on the board, you know my pain. Um, okay. You know what I said, though? Seriously. Still has to get and done you, by, you still has to get done by Friday. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and I'm afraid <laughs> we're getting no. And, I think and, the, the difference, right. uh, the difference, Kevin, is that uh, I said uh, Power Doug, and I think you said come back to us. No. Okay. But we're 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 on the road, and we're ha but we're we're with that. Um, it, um, and I don't want to cut anyone off, but I think everyone can see where the board's going. Ms. Stamps, name and address for the record. I mean, again, this is just trying to convince us to support the motion that was just made. That ship sailed. <laughs> uh, Susan Stamps, Grafton Street. Um, just a quick um, suggestion for a simple amendment you could make to the broad language that's before you. Uh, right now it says to see if the town will resolve to become a sanctuary town, blah, blah, blah. And after sanctuary town, you could add, or a trust act town, or otherwise a town that is officially welcoming to all immigrants. Okay. Thank you. Thank so. you. And, and what I'm, what we, what's on the table right now is the broader language to go back with Attorney Heim and, and Human Rights Commission and others where all of that will be incorporated. So my fear for myself personally, if I say anything specific and yes. can convince a majority of my colleagues to agree to that and I miss something, um, then it falls by the wayside. So I think the motion Mr. Dunn has made, it definitely encapsulates that. It will be incorporated Thank along you. the way. Thank you. Mr. Dunn, did you have your hand up? I'm sorry. <coughs> Hi, name and address, just for the record. Hi, my name is Hannah Poor. Um, I live at 63 High Haith Road. Um, I was the original proponent of the second language. Um, I really appreciate the Human Rights Commission's leadership on this. I wish we got in touch a little earlier um, to maybe work it out a little bit. I would just say um, I really appreciate your advice and all the opinions that have been brought forward. I hope that eventually we would land on something very specific that clearly lays out what we hope to do as a town not just to say that we're a sanctuary town, um, which I don't think act it doesn't have any legal meaning. Um, so they aren't actually two different terms, according to my understanding. This would be our way of saying we're a sanctuary town. And here's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope we can choose the avenue that would lead us best mm -hmm. to lay out very specific, clear points that we would have, um, especially given the part about the non-discriminatory collection of data, specifically addressing the concerns about registering people based on their religious affiliation, which has been a specific threat mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. directed by this administration. Um, so I appreciate everyone um, thinking about this, but I hope that we'll land on things that perhaps we could translate into other languages, but specifically saying, like, this is what we're going to do to protect you. Um, and that could be the outreach piece that, you know, sort of telling people what we will do, what we can't do. And again, um, I. Definitely agree with that. And in terms of our process, right. when we have the actual Warren out of yeah, hearing, that's when we'll all come back together and get into specifics and recommendations from individuals and groups. And then it will be on that general placeholder, it will say, so voted, if that's the way we're going, from the Board of Selectmen. And that's where you'll see all those specifics in there. But that's not where we're at right now. We're just trying to answer the question right. of, from what I thought I was hearing was that, Yes, this warrant article is going to be filed perhaps by some citizens, perhaps by the Human Rights Commission, but felt that I wanted to give my colleagues the opportunity to ha see if we wanted to co-sponsor it. So I really want to remind people that, as well as be cognizant of the vote that's on the table. Um, and, but anyone's welcome to come up. I just don't want to, you're going to have to come back and say that all again at the true warrant article hearing. This is, it's going to get filed. Who wants to be on the ship? Or, the, or in the car, or in the train, or marching through Boston Common, Attorney Heim. I got it. I'm going to make sure that Susan and Judy and <laughs> Christine and Hannah all get a chance to take a look at this so that hopefully we can have one Warren article and then there will be more uh, that can include a lot of substantive discussion about the resolution when it comes. And then everybody come back that night in February or March to say, just want to get up and say, you know what, you got it, I'm, I'm great, or I don't see it in there, am I missing it? And if not, say, can I convince at least three of the five of you to say you're also going to vote to do this also? So I'm not trying to stifle anyone. I just want to, you know, not, we're, we're just at step one. <laughs> okay. Uh, next. Hi. Name and address for the record. Ann Dwyer Wilmer, 15 Adams Street. I just wanted to quickly address a question that had been asked by Mr. Currow earlier about what other than policing this affects. Yeah. Um, so I'm a physician with a primarily immigrant population, and the places that people report withdrawing from civic participation are often uh, schools, 
engagement in um, healthcare services such as WIC and public housing applications. Thank you. Uh, anyone else on this first? If not, um, Chief, we're all set. I'm, I'm okay. Okay. The the high, the Woo! <laughs> <laughs> on a motion by uh, Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Kiro, all those in favor? Any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Uh, Chapter Lane and Attorney Heim, uh, go forth and do good things. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you all. Okay, I'm going to continue on this road. Uh, again, the, the next um, Warren article, um, I've had conversations uh, with the town manager. Um, this is a Warren article. I'd like my colleagues to uh, consider if it's something they also want to uh, co-sponsor. It's concerning um, a, a pride commission. It's been brought up um, by various members of the community. It, it sort of mirrors, which was one of my questions initially, um, what we already have established at our high school with the GLBTQ um, a group that we have up there. Um, again, this Warren article will be filed. I just wanted to, where it seemed like a policy decision, um, and ask Mr. Chapdelaine to uh, fill in some of the details. Great. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this really stemmed from a series of conversations I had with a uh, previous speaker, Mel Goldstein, a member of the Human Rights Commission, as we were working on, or I should say she was working on filling out uh, the Municipal Human Equality Index um, that the town has been uh, taking part in for the past, um, past two years. Uh, and it came to light that without, the, um, without a liaison to the mayor's office, that's what's called in the charter, I, so I suppose it would be a liaison to either the board or the manager, um, we weren't getting some points that we otherwise should be getting. Uh, that led to talk about the fact that uh, our neighboring community, Cambridge, has a pride commission. I'm not sure if that's the exact name um, of the group, but uh, the, the idea being a pride commission. Um, and, and we talked about um, sort of the whys and wherefores of why we would have a pride commission. And the general idea that I got from the conversation was it would send a strong message uh, to those in the LGBTQ community in Arlington that we were uh, very accepting of them and that they were a part of the fabric of the community and this would be a place to, to have conversations about policies and programs to support that community. Uh, so at that time, and this is months ago now, um, I had told Mel that I'd be happy to bring this, um, bring this article forward and, and that's why we're here tonight. So I know, um, I think Mel has put a <coughs> bit of information, I don't know if she wants to share any of it uh, tonight or talk about it, but um, I would certainly recommend that the board give strong consideration to filing this warrant article to, to move this debate or move this discussion forward. Thank you, Mr. Chapdelaine. Um, would anyone like to come up and speak to this? Mel, you don't have to, it's, but if. And, um, the, and the gentleman. Oh, I'm happy to. I'll follow up. What I should say for the Human Rights Commission is that this wasn't on our agenda for the last meeting, and so we were not able to take an official vote. We did discuss it, and the, the view was favorable, um, but we would have to have an official vote um, to be an official co-sponsor, so it sounds like that's not on the table for this stage. I don't know if we can sign on Yeah, I don't think later. They, don't, they don't have to be. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I do have uh, some information I'd be happy to pass out if people want, it's a list of projects that we could... Um, that this Pride Commission could do in their first couple of years um, and about, uh, some questions to consider about how many people would be on the commission in order to be able to really do their work and, you know, can we start this with a really small budget? I think we can. Um, and, and then just a technical thing about, like, who would be posting the minutes, it, just because there's no administrative staff support for it, you know, just tiny little things, but also a bunch of uh, information from the LGBTQ survey that we did. So if you guys want a copy of this, I'm Definitely. happy yes, to. Yes, please. Yeah. Do you have five or no? Yeah. Okay, can we get those? Some of us will speed read, but. <laughs> so I just want to say that I really appreciate Adam's leadership on this. He's been really supportive since the, the very first minute. Jenny Rate as well has been super, super supportive. So I love our town. Thank so you. much. And just say your name and address again. Uh, just Mel Goldsite, uh, Precinct 20, Human Rights Commission. Yeah, in case somebody just zones in, mm -hmm. you know, cues up to this part of the meeting. Mr. Greeley? So 
Can we co-sponsor this with the Human Rights Commission or no? I mean, commission, is it the Commission on Disabilities or Human Rights? Yes. Yes. Human yes. Rights, and can we? Well, no, because you haven't voted, is that the idea? Yeah. yeah. So it'd be, it could be us and the town manager, or it could just be the town manager. It could be us and the town, I was envisioning yeah. Board of Selectmen and town manager, and then of course we'd be hearing from Human mm. Rights Commission and others, but. Yeah, no, I just, the, uh, I, I have a lot of trust in the Human Rights Commission, so what, I, but I'm more than glad to sponsor it or whatever, however my board. Yeah. The, this feel. particular one, the way I see it right now, would be Board of Selectmen and Town Manager, but Mr. Dunn? We've got a gentleman who's been waiting to speak. Right, right. Okay. Oh no, I was just answering the, right. my colleague's question. Yep, no, I, I was. Just uh, watch out for that, you're very tall. <laughs> I have such fears of, I duck and I'm not even close. Name and address for the record, sir, thank you. Good evening, my name is <clears throat> Bill Gardner. I live at 11 Monotomy Rocks Drive. Please don't send my mail to 11 Monotomy Road. <laughs> I'm here uh, from the board of the Mystic LGBTQ Youth Support Network. We're a volunteer organization in the community uh, working with LGBTQ youth in our community. I know many of you have teenagers and know the challenges of raising teenagers today and the issues that they face. and. Uh, our LGBTQ teenagers have all additional set of issues that they're wrestling with, and so it's really important that they get support. I've been very blessed to be able to have a presence at the Arlington Center for the Arts on Friday night where young people can come for programming and support, and uh, work very closely with the Youth Counseling Center, with the Parent Forum on education and so forth. So we're really feeling we're getting some good momentum in the process of our doing our work here, we've been identified as uh, one of the structures in the town concerned about LGBTQ issues. And so people have been coming to us from the community, even though our main focus is on youth. And it's created quite a dilemma for us because we, we recognize the validity of the issues that people are bringing to us. Uh, they're looking for information about what kind of programming is going on. They're looking for a safe space to uh, have the emotional support that, that they would really like to have. They're looking for people who will organize when a horrible thing like the massacre in Orlando happened and bring people together to, to uh, express our grief and, and uh, move forward from a, a tragedy like that. So we see the real needs uh, of people in the larger community. And, but we're in this dilemma of we're not, that's not our focus. In fact, we're trying to get our resources so that we can really work with the youth. So that's why we're, we're coming tonight encouraging you to set up that structure. We know that structure is needed from our experience of connecting with people in the community. We, and we're hoping that you're going to put that in place and also we're excited about the possibility of our organization working hand in glove with that structure in the future. So also in relationship to that, um, we have been doing research on s such entities around the country. And we've gotten through about uh, half of the states uh, on, on the list and uh, it, it's really turned into quite a project. But we have identified five or six other communities around the country that have such a structure. And we're hoping to be able to, uh, from that, learn what they're doing and provide some information that would help us actually uh, shape what we might be doing here. So um, I do stand tonight in hopes that you will give support to this uh, and that it will meet some real needs in our community. I'd be glad to respond to any questions anybody has. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Gardner, thank you for coming out. Um, uh, would anyone else like to speak on this Warren, uh, Warren article discussion? Uh, if not from my colleagues, I, I think what I have before you is um, joining with the town manager in um, placing this broader language um, Warren article regarding the Pride Commission and then when we take the steps forward, uh, getting the specifics and details. Um, Mr. Dunn? So moved. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by? Second. Mr. Kiro, uh, any questions? I'm all set, Mr. Chappelling. Good. On a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Kiro, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you, appreciate that. Um, 
Next, again, um, this is just to give the board consideration <coughs> if um, I would anticipate, along with the town manager, placing this um, warrant article before town meeting regarding um, an appointed treasurer, uh, Mr. Chapdelaine. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to be brief, I know we talked about this at the last board meeting of whether or not the board would, um, would be entertaining uh, moving this forward to town meeting, and we talked about bringing this very question back uh, to the board at this meeting. Uh, so town council has drafted, um, uh, I think, a, a broad and flexible warrant article, and then laid out, uh, laid out a timeline or a series of timelines that we could utilize uh, if the board was interested in moving forward. So um, I'm, I will state for myself, I'm still very interested in pursuing this. Uh, I have already begun some conversations uh, with folks across departments, uh, including the school department. Uh, and I, I would actually defer to town council, though, with any detailed questions you have about how legally the process would work out. Um, is there, uh, Mr. Grilly? Well, um, I move that we recommend favorable action, although are we not at that point yet? Can be. Okay. Yeah, no, it can be. Well, okay. Motion by Mr. Greeley. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Curo. Um, is there anyone here to speak to this particular warrant article? Um, just for my colleagues' edification, um, I had envisioned that the board, along with the town manager, would um, co-sponsor this warrant article. And for myself, the personal caveat would be, um, I think this is an important discussion that town meeting needs to have. Um, if we do uh, go the appointed treasurer route, there's a series of steps we need to take. Um, this would be the first one, and then I believe um, working out particulars, having a ballot question in the future, um, and, and then a further action possibly at the next town meeting, depending on the outcome of that. Um, I will say that when I, myself personally, having conversations with the town manager, and I've said it um, a couple of previous meetings, as far back as weeks and months, if not two, three years ago, when I keep saying the tale of two audits, but um, the only conversation I've had with the town manager, which have been very positive and, and, and uh, constructive, and at the last meeting, I had asked our colleague, Mr. Kiro and Mr. Chapdelaine to um, look at uh, establishing a dialogue where I think the schools, as also Mr. Kiro pointed out, are sort of at a unique place if they wanted to reevaluate anything, and that's up to them and their purview. And Mr. Chapdelaine, when I met <coughs> them, um, in the middle of last week has indicated that, you know, Mr. Chapdelaine and Mr. Kiro have sort of been brainstorming on that in, in, in terms of outreach. So um, why I, I initially, um, when this question first came up, I was 100% this should be an elected position. Right now, I'm of the opinion that I want to hear from um, my colleagues on town meeting, as well as the residents of the town, mm. as well as hearing from Mr. Chapdelaine in terms of he, with the outgoing treasurer or any other um, department heads or expertise um, that he needs, as well as, you know, if there's any movement, which the school interest that I have is in no way tied to any of this. I'm just sort of taking advantage of the moment. So um, I know some people will be might say to me, hey, you were 100% on um, elected treasurer. Um, but I do stand by that when we commissioned that report from the DOR and they came out with a seven or 10, I keep saying tenants, bullet points, whatever, um, I would have liked to have adopt, uh, adopted some if not close to all of them. So, um, but I think um, just getting a sense of the, the town of Arlington, um, what it means to be a treasurer right now, um, I'm right now in the middle of the road um, and, and open to and appoint a treasurer if I feel confident in what my colleagues in town meeting say, what the citizenry says, as well as another big hurdle for me was who the town manager was. And I, I know um, we did everything, but <laughs> promise you the sun, sky, and moon because you know we really wanted you to stay here and are very extremely confident in your abilities. And I have no qualms in terms of the process that our town manager would move ahead for that not only would be um, be serving your current administration and department heads, but I really feel confident that you'll put an effective framework in terms of if this is the way we go for an appointed treasurer for not only accomplishing that goal, but also setting the framework for a future administration town manager, whoever he or she may be, and his or her um, department head. So I just, in case anyone, and I know I'll get calls on that, 
um, or saying this might seem like a switch from my previous position, uh, yes it is, but it's in a sense that um, just looking at currently what the town of Arlington looks like and uh, you know what it means to be a treasurer from when um, someone was the elected treasurer you know many years ago when this was first established. So sorry for that long-winded explanation. I just wanted to, I'm not thumbprinting it, but I'm so leaning towards it. But I'm also trying to see if there's any way I can pull some more of that DOR report in, which is not in any way tied to this vote. This is solely for a Warren article to explore and get a sense of a conversion to an appointed treasurer as a Warren article as a first step for this year's town meeting. A uh, motion by um, Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Uh, any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thanks for letting me be long-winded on this. Um, on this particular warrant out of- uh, Madam Chair, excuse me, just on that, mm -hmm. if it does change, we as a board need to discuss the parking clerk position. Yes. Right now it goes with the term mm -hmm. of the elected treasurer. Um, so anyhow, but that's not- I agree 100%. That's not related to this, but it is something maybe Mr. Chapter Lane- That's a good, very good point. Kind of takes a look at. Right. Thank yes. you. And I would like to have a discussion on that at, a, at the appropriate time. And then on thank the, um, thank you, Mr. Gurley. <coughs> Thanks, Kevin. On the Warren article for tax exemption for seniors, um, and I'll let Mr. Chapdelaine sort of give more particulars on this, but as uh, we went through the last debt exclusion and went to the voters and um, spoke to many people and had such a strong support from seniors, from low middle income families, but also who had, and veterans and um, disabled. Um, persons also had some strong concerns about them to say, you know, we love Arlington and the fabric of this community, but this is another thing that um, kind of puts a, a peg into perhaps we can't stay here um, any longer. So um, I'll let the manager outline that it's sort of a, a couple of, I shouldn't say a couple of, some work off programs where you could work expanding what we have currently in terms of if you fit the criteria um, because we do want to keep those people in Arlington. <laughs> That's why we're so diverse and we love it here because I love to hear a story of you know, someone in their 80s and 90s and pushing hundreds or someone who's disabled, whether it's a war or an illness, um, uh, their experiences here in Arlington and what has been a benefit to them. So uh, some are work off programs, some are tax exemptions and I just want to, I, I did contact um, Kate Leary, Mariah Terrell, Jane Morgan, Greg Christiana, just to make them aware of these Warren articles that the town manager um, has before us as a tool for any future um, overrides and, ex and or exclusions, as well as the question came up about whether this would be, would this provide relief to the most recent debt exclusion in terms of being retroactive or not. I'm gonna let the manager speak to that because I pretty much know the answer, but where you have all the particulars, I'm sure you have exactly how you wanna present each one. I just wanna put the question on the table that when I've been talking about these Warren articles and asking people to advocate if they support them and support them, that question comes up. Would any of these be retroactive to the debt exclusion we just passed or is there no relief at all? And I think the answer lies somewhere therein. Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Madam Chair. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll start by answering that question. Oh, okay. um, so for the debt exclusions that all passed uh, last year, uh, all of those taxes are yet to be paid. Uh, the borrowing, the, most re the only borrowing that's been done to date is that for the Thompson School, and that was just very recently done. Uh, and as my understanding, has not um, yet hit the tax rate. So those recently passed debt exclusions will hit future tax rates. And if any of these programs are adopted, those who sign up for them will get the benefit in the future. So, so though, though it doesn't go backwards retroactively, the future impacts of those debt exclusions will be impacted by the potential adoption uh, of, of all or any of these uh, senior tax work off or exemption programs. So I, I actually don't have a lot to add to what you already said, uh, Madam Chair, but I'll, I'll briefly say, um, to reiterate what you said, I certainly heard loud and clear when this board put the debt exclusion ballot questions um, on the ballot that they wanted there to be a serious look uh, taken in the future at how we can make sure that our, our senior residents are taken into consideration as taxation decisions are being made. Uh, also, I know the board and myself have heard from the Council on Aging uh, about how they would also want to make sure that the senior population is taken into account as we plan uh, financially and budgetarily going forward. 
So a lot of work was put into putting these together by uh, Christine Bargiorno, Director of Health and Human Services, who is here tonight uh, working in cooperation with the Council on Aging, who I think maybe a quorum of is here tonight as well to possibly speak about these matters. Um, so to start, there's four um, potential warrant articles before the board tonight. The first two are property tax work off, or, uh, work off articles, one for seniors, one specifically for veterans. These both would operate functionally quite similar to the current Harry Barber program we have and really would work in coordination and be able to expand the amount of opportunities we grant for, the, for folks in the community to work off um, portions of their real estate tax. The third uh, would be the creation of a voluntary fund by which donations could then go in the future to offset uh, real estate taxes of both elderly and disabled persons of low income. And then finally, the final article would allow for annual adjustments to the threshold by which one would qualify for property tax uh, exemptions um, based on their income. Uh, so right now that's a set amount. If this was adopted, it would allow us to go up by the CPI every year so that we could adjust over time. Um, we would, if the board chose to put all four of these uh, onto the, um, the warrant, we would definitely start working on the specifics of the proposals to obviously come back uh, and have more detail about what the specific impacts would be on seniors who live in Arlington if we rolled these out. And Mr. Carroll? Uh, th thank you, Madam Chair. Could you just explain just a little bit more the, the last one, uh, the CPI? Yeah, so my, my understanding um, is that right now there's a, a certain threshold, uh, income threshold or income and assets threshold Got it. by which you need to qualify and it's flat. With this we can Got it. bump it up. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I actually have a question either for our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, or per perhaps Mrs. Bongiorno. Um, if one, some, or all, which I hope is all, of these Warren articles um, are put forth successful and moving forward, could someone sort of not only take the microphone and speak to the constituency that I'm thinking of, but in terms of, um, and the town manager has done the yeoman's 98% of work in his staff in terms of creating these, but um, when myself and my colleagues were involved in the lost debt exclusion as well as talking about an override, possible future override and or possible future exclusions, um, sort of how you would explain to that constituency in terms of, you know, what does this mean? Is it a form I file? Do I have to, you know, where do I go? Do you need to have, you know, all this financial information? Like how, when I go out and say, you know what, we heard you, this is before town meeting, and or if it, when it goes through, how we just talk that 101 language to that constituency. Is that an appropriate question to ask right now? Is, is that okay? Like, sure. So you yeah. can give me, I'm just gonna parrot back whatever you say to me, hopefully when these go through. Um, when we're talking to seniors and, and uh, families with disabled <coughs> or developmentally delayed um, individuals, because they don't want to hear the nuts and bolts, oh yeah, I carried th this through town meeting, it was so heavy. They just want to know it's a form, you fill it out, you go here, or, or you call this number, or whatever. So, if that's okay. Yeah, if you're comfortable doing that. Mm, that's okay. So just Christine, name and position sure, yeah. for the record. Christine Bongiorno, Health and Human Services Director. Um, so of these four articles um, that are before you, we really did look to other communities to see what was available, um, what other communities are putting in place, and looked at the state legislation. So you have here, I would say, probably one of the most comprehensive um, packages in addition to our current tax relief um, available um, if these were voted through. Um, but in order to do some education around um, these proposals, the assessor's office does a really good job at getting the word out. Uh, the Council on Aging does a great job. And in addition to um, you know, those departments working together on this, we brought this to the Veterans Council. We brought this to the Disability Commission. Um, so there are a number of groups that are working to make this happen and are really supportive of these efforts. Um, and obviously they'll get that out to their constituencies. Um, to do some more education. Um, but really the Council on Aging and the assessors help people with forms, help with the applications, and to make sure that people are able to successfully apply for these programs. I think that answers your question. Thank you, yes. Uh, is there anyone else here from the audience that would like to speak to one, some, or all of these tax exemption? Would you come up to the microphone? Stranger, name and address for the record, sir. <laughs> See, he knows to duck when he gets to the team. All right, Bob Radosha, Columbia Road. I'm all for some kind of exemption, something to work, but it can't work for me. Uh, the income and the asset thing puts me out of play in terms of everything. Yet, 
I can't afford it. It's getting so that I'm thinking we've got to do something. I'm on a fixed income. Nothing changes. Social Security went up, but the Medicare went, part of it went the other way. So there's no increase there. I'm on a PBGC pension because my company went bankrupt. And so I'm, it's fixed, no change. So I'm relying on maybe some good interest rates in the banks. That's not happening. And I, I have a way to save the town some money. And that is if I didn't move and I got a $2,000 exemption, say, I don't know, 20%, I would save the town probably $30,000, $50,000 in school costs. That these aren't three kids coming into live in my house that are going to have to go to school. So we can save you some money if you help me along that way. But I, I can't qualify for anything. I mean, the residential exemption thing that they have in Watertown and several other towns, Boston, and I think Cambridge might have it also. It's a great idea, but it can't work here. But if you could, some, something like that adjusted so it, it was age appropriate rather than anyone, uh, something like that would help. But too many people are footing in towns, and when you sell a house, two kids come in, three kids come in. And that's kind of going the other way from what it's doing to the school budget and so forth. So that's my take on it. It would be nice to be. I can't even qualify to do some work in the town. You know, other than walk the streets and let you hear what I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Um, anyone else? Name and position for the record. How are Susan you, Susan? Carp, the Executive Director of the Council on Aging. I really just want to thank you for the opportunity of allowing us to bring this forward. I think uh, between Christine Bongiorno and the um, um, Council on Aging Board of Directors, We've taken a lot of time to take a look at what we have in town that we can bring forward um, that's already in place in the legislature, legislature to, to basically try to ease some of the burden. Um, you know, I don't live in Arlington. I think Arlington is an awesome place. And I'd really like the opportunity for everyone that wants to stay in town is able to take advantage of all the opportunities that we have with regards to reducing the expenses. And I think the items that are brought forward are a fine example of the hard work um, that goes beyond trying to keep folks in town, keeping Arlington an age-friendly environment, and how can you go wrong? How can you go wrong? It encourages civic engagement. Uh, we're also looking at, on some of the Warren articles, about the possibility of individuals stepping forward and doing the work in lieu of the senior. So for those that feel that they don't qualify for the program because they're not able to get out and work the same way that they did, that we might have proxies come in and help. So some of these things are still in work, but I just really wanted to say thank you, and I hope that um, you consider it and bring it forward. Thanks, Susan. Good to see you again. Thank you. Um, Mr. Carroll? I'd like to move that we uh, sponsor these uh, articles, I guess co-sponsor with the town manager, is that? Yes. Yeah, and, and if I may, I actually, I'm not clear, has the Council on Aging voted on these articles, Christine? So All of them? Per perhaps we should note the Council on Aging mm -hmm. with yeah. the filing as well. Yes. So, um, Motion by Mr. Kiro on all four, sir? Yes. Seconded by? Second. Mr. Dunn. Um, any further questions? Is it a, uh, Mr. Grilly? So by any chance, with the 28 years of sitting at these meetings and the 33 years a town meeting count as work for the town to be deducted, probably not from my real estate taxes, no. Counts against you. <laughs> 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 Only since I've been a senior citizen. <laughs> and Attorney Heim, we can vote on all four of these collectively. Because yes. we're just voting to put them in. Let's yep. right. We'll take unless, them unless, unless the board wants to vote on them individually because there's a, no. we have a motion to put all four together, yep. together yep. as far as I understand. Okay. Yeah. And then when we have the hearings, we'll hear, do each of them separately. On a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Are those opposed? Aye. I was yawning. Aye. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> aye. A it unanimous vote. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were trying to be a pirate, maybe. Aye. <laughs> but anyways. We now go to agenda item 11, discussion statement regarding president-elect appointments. Uh, this was something I was uh, contacted, the board was contacted through an e email from an Arlington mm -hmm. resident. Um, it originally came in as correspondence received. We're now following the process through where it's an agenda item. And if I could, I'd like to um, call on the proponent. Please come up, just state your name and address for the record, even though we remember you. <laughs> uh, Colin Fredericks, 42 Rawson Road. 
so what I'm looking for here is a, um, a statement uh, of some sort by the, by the Board of Selectmen um, in, in, in general against the appointments that have been made by uh, now President Trump uh, on, on the basis of poor ability and poor suitability uh, and especially on, on, in many cases, issues of uh, just straight out bigotry, uh, things that we've been talking about earlier this, earlier this evening. Um, and calling on the representatives of Massachusetts and its governor to, to make similar statements. Um, I don't know whether the board has, has made statements like this in the past, uh, whether you've considered those sorts of things or not. Um, this was just something that I, I felt str strongly about and wanted to bring to you. And in, in just as my colleagues um, could glean from the, the original email, um, I'm going to say Mr. Fredericks first and Colin after that, okay? <laughs> um, what Colin had sent us was that he was trying to uh, communicate with our current governor about asking him to express his sentiments to the then president-elect regarding um, at least two of the proposed cabinet um, nominees. I don't know if either one of those have been confirmed yet. Um, I know three have, but anyways, um, and wasn't having much success and was asking uh, the board to consider uh, sending a communication to the governor um, asking him basically to join with Colin to aid him in getting the governor to do that. Um, it, it, that's really where the antithesis of this started. I've, I've been in court all day repeating everything, so my mouth's a little fried. Um, and, and since the request came in, I put it forth on the agenda. Um, I'll just say for myself, historically, in terms of um, I've been on the board, uh, we've never communicated or any correspondence beyond sometimes you get a holiday card or something like that um, with a president-elect or a president um, as a, an official board of selectmen, as well as um, I'm trying to think, you know, um, the f times we've uh, communicated or contacted any governor, it's usually been um, something that's come from the governor's office, um, basically asking the board through our department heads to support something like that. I do want to hear from my colleagues, and, and I don't want to um, dismiss any possible avenue. I feel in terms of myself being on the Board of Selectmen, kind of what we did previously in the agenda in terms of sending out a message, first, sometimes responding, reacting to um, current events at hand um, in terms of they could define us and perhaps not in a good way that, that perhaps goes against the mission and, and the statement and the goals that hopefully the citizens of Arlington think that the Board of Selectmen hears and is also in its day-to-day -day activities um, conducting itself that way to make sure that um, we define and correctly define um, what the town of Arlington should be regardless of any possible um, outside influence, whether it's on the federal level, whether it's on an, an environmental level, whether it's on just an individual business or, or citizenry level. So, um, but you did submit the request, and, and there's no way any of us, and I just happen to be chair this year, um, wouldn't respond to it. So um, I'd be interested in hearing what my colleagues think on this particular issue, just myself personally. Um, I'm not trying to be sarcastic or anything, but Governor Baker, I would bet he doesn't really care what I think. <laughs> and I don't know about President, well, President, the pres currently pre President, but um, you definitely, um, it's something to be discussed and to see how we respond to this. I hope you feel by some of the previous Warren article discussions and initiatives that this board has taken individually as well as uh, co-sponsoring with other groups kind of answer some of that question and allay some of the concern, valid, valid concerns that not only you have, but every single member of this board and um, the administration on the left lives every day. Um, so I hope you, and I'm not saying the board will or will not do anything. I'm just saying that um, I feel if we do just what we've done tonight, I feel we perhaps allayed some residents' concerns that Town of Arlington stay in the course. We know what our community is. We've defined it, and we know how we want to serve it. And 
we're still going down the road that way. So, but I, I pontificated. I just wanted to explain how we got to where we are, Mr. Kiro. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to ask your indulgence too, oh, too, because yes. I've thought a lot about this, and and mm -hmm. I have I think some of the same concerns you have. But I but I wanted to think about this, how this applies through our uh, prism. So I think. I think it's fair to say that all of us up here as elected officials, we greatly respect the will of the voters. I mean, that's how we got here, and that's that's how we've moved a lot of our great, um, you know, strides forward in this community has always relied on the, on the will of, of the, um, the voters. And I think we also know that the, um, the voters in this town overwhelmingly disagreed with the majority of the Electoral College. Um, so we're a little bit of at odds. I, I think the chair um, was very eloquent in talking about some of the things that we did tonight. I think it was a demonstration of some of the values that we hold dear in, in um, the community. Personally, and I'm going to just speak, if I might speak personally just, just for a moment. You know, my, my family and I joined so many others in, on uh, Boston Common this weekend. Four times the population of Arlington was on the Boston Common. Four times the population of this town was, was there and that was joined uh, across the country. And I kept running into Arlingtonians on every corner, mm -hmm. on every street, <clears throat> no surprise. And on subway platforms, <laughs> for a long time on subway platforms. So there's a lot of concern. I think we've all, we've all heard it in different ways from our constituents. Personally, I look at the prism of what we do as a town and what concerns I have when I see, you, you raised the issue of, of, of cabinet appointments. So I see a secretary of education who's made a career essentially on dismantling public education, struggled to, to really um, <clears throat> articulate the uh, federal government's commitment to IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities and Education Act, struggled with the, the whole um, argument between proficiency and growth. These are central themes in education. Our school committee in our town really tries to do a lot of, uh, a, uh, um, be out front with those. Sometimes we do better than at other times, but we really make an effort here and the voters have supported those efforts. That concerns me when I see that. Um, we see an, there's a nominee for HUD, brilliant surgeon, no experience with, with, um, with this area. This board has partnered with our, our affordable housing advocates in town. This board every year relies on HUD for CDBG funds, which we help as is, it forms really a vital part of the safety net in this town. That's a concern for me as, as an individual and a member of this board. We've seen a number of nominees who are um, climate change deniers and uh, a nominee for Secretary of Energy who called for elimination of the department, which flies in the face of some of the values that we've articulated here. We hired an energy manager here. This board endorsed the Community uh, Choice Aggregation Act. We, our town has put solar on the, on the schools. We've taken these things very, very seriously. Um, we see a nominee for Attorney General who's um, um, <clears throat> really taken a punitive justice uh, approach and has had a questionable civil rights record. You saw our commitment to civil rights um, this evening and putting forward and working with some of our partners in the community. Um, we have a, a strong commitment here to restorative justice as well. Our police department excels in working on res restorative um, justice, um, as well as, uh, I'll just say, in working with um, really partnering with our um, <clears throat> health and human services professionals on, um, on narco narcotics issues. So I could go on and on, but I look at it through the prism of what we have put forward as values in this town. So I personally, I have a concern with some of those. I will say that one bright light, one bright light in all, all of this is that this board in particular spends an awful lot of time on transportation issues. And the nominee currently for transportation secretary has more federal agency experience than just about all of the other nominees put together. Sure. And if the president is to be taken at his word, we will see, hopefully, um, a large transportation infrastructure package. I say hopefully and hopefully with a sustainable um, funding package, and that's the big question mark there. I have all of these questions. I share that with you. But like the chair, I think that, I think that we probably, um, we may be kidding ourselves if we think that this board will be able to take a vote and convince the governor to convince the president to withdraw these nominees. He's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. I think that what might be a more prudent course for this, this board to take in this, this regard 
is to articulate some of the values that we, we hold. We don't have to necessarily address specific nominees because, frankly, the horse is out of the gate. The nomination hearings are going on now, you know, several of the nominees. I, I think it's appropriate for this board to articulate some of Arlington's values and some of the things that we have done that, that um, we are most proud of and to um, uh, forward those to our federal delegation with a request that they please exercise strong oversight and act in our interest in these specific areas. And I think it's also appropriate for us to communicate with the governor and likewise ask him for partnership because it seems that on some of, so many of these areas, it's going to fall to the states and local communities like Arlington, I think, to really um, uh, keep momentum going, positive momentum uh, going um, in so many of these areas and to ask the governor and the legislature for, for partnership in keeping these initiatives um, alive during a time which, which, in my view, promises to be a very dark time nationally. And so I, I apologize for taking, but I, I thought a lot about it, and I, I think that, that asking the governor to, to convince the president is maybe a non-starter, but asking the governor for partnership in, in these, these areas on a, on a local state uh, basis and asking our legislative delegation also to look out for our interests in this area makes sense. That takes time to craft. But. I'm sorry, Chair, uh, no, and, and no. my colleagues. Uh, no, no, and, and I will say, um, as Colin relayed to us, in his, <coughs> and you're okay with me mm -hmm. using your first name, um, in his email that a lot of it, my interpretation was really his frustration mm -hmm. with, you know, what can he do as well as join with mm -hmm. others to do. Um, he wanted to start at this sort of stepping off point to see, have the conversation, see if, uh, what he was initially proposing was something that is viable and, and could be done and or through discussion, perhaps another route could possibly be taken that the town of Arlington embark on that and then um, pretty much uh, a lot of what Mr. Kiro um, has outlined and, and what we've discussed previously. And then that would also be a tool for Colin and others to go out and say, if you feel the same way I do and you want to take some action on it, but you're not really sure what it is. Um, it di didn't necessarily have to be exactly 100% what Colin was proposing, but, um, and he was saying if there's nothing this board can do, then there's nothing this board can do, but um, basically uh, give him um, an instrument to say to his um, family, friends, or uh, uh, colleagues in other cities and towns, well, if you feel the same way I do and you feel there's no recourse, this is what Arlington and its Board of Selectmen has done. You may want to propose that to your city council, your Board of Selectmen, or whatever the um, uh, elected or appointed um, body is um, to your city and town. So I d just wanted to um, say my sense of your email was you weren't firm 100% on yes. what you were saying, but you were saying if this board can't do anything, you understand, but if it isn't this and you can do it, you'd love to hear it. Mr. Greeley? So uh, I would move that we do not, uh, as a board, create a statement regarding president-elect appointments. Uh, I don't think we should as a matter of policy, uh, and I don't think we're qualified either. Uh, but I admire the passion that Mr. Fredericks has shown us tonight and our colleague Joe Curo, and perhaps a resolution at town meeting is something he might want to consider. But I don't believe this board should uh, any more than if Hillary, who I supported, was elected, that we should make a statement that we, we endorse all of her appointments. Uh, we, we need to focus on Arlington, so. Is that a motion? Uh, yeah, I move we do not. Uh, so I guess I don't have to, I guess I don't have to make a motion to do that, unless somebody's unless gonna someone make makes a to positive do action it. Yeah, motion. Yeah. It's status quo otherwise, right. right? Well, I think what I was going to suggest as a, as a motion is to just, uh, no, not necessarily with reference to any uh, nominees, that, that we just list some of the accomplishments of this board that we have concerns about and ask our federal delegation and the governor to partner with us to make sure that they, they remain strong and, and protected to the extent that they are able to do so. I don't think it has to be a specific uh, statement about uh, cabinet nominees, because I, I agree, I don't think that's our place to be, to be, as a board, to be commenting on specific cabinet nominees. We know what we've done, right. and we know what values we've, we, we hold here in, in Arlington, and I, I feel that it would be appropriate to 
draft some statement communication to our delegation mm -hmm. and our and our governor just asking for partnership as we move forward and I'm, I'm willing to if I'm willing to put that in the motion I'm willing to volunteer to draft some initial language and if the board is not happy with it I'm, I'm, I'm happy to withdraw it okay yeah. motion by mr. Carroll is there a second 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 by mr. Dunn um, any further questions? Or no, comments? I favor that. Take I mean, a vote on that. Um, here's what we believe in. Our brag sheet. Please help us. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's fine. We know who you are, but just name and address for the record. <laughs> Boy, I got the Boston record. Yeah, Bob Radosha. I was going to say Bob record, but okay, <laughs> Radosha. Um, I'm opposed to the board taking a position on this. I don't think it's engaging in partisan politics, which has been going on too long. I believe, uh, and it's undermined a lot of things in this country, and I think it's time we get over it. Um, and I'm not sure, you sh I don't think the board should be speaking for everyone in town on this. And if you choose to go ahead, I'd like you to put a footnote on it saying, excluding Bob Radosha, <laughs> okay? But, uh, Bob, Bob, did you, under did you, did you hear clearly what, said? what the motion is? Because he's not, the motion We're wasn't about. We're not supporting that. No. Okay, I, I, I just want to make a statement saying that I don't support doing this. Doing what? A statement or a letter to the governor or anybody else from the town of Arlington. On any issue ever? No. Okay. No. On this particular, this is partisan politics. M M Mr. No. Radoshi, I don't think you understand the motion. Okay, go ahead. The motion that Mr. Caro just made was to make a motion to talk about the values and what Arlington believes in, including things like uh, t talking about the inclusion that we... Uh, I understand. Okay. You don't even believe we should be talking to the governor about inclusion? That, that's something else, I think. I don't think that's, that's, that's what this that is. No, his motion, motion is we just want to hi highlight, encapsulate, this is what the town of Arlington has done, the actions that it's taken around okay. IDEA for children. I understand that. That's children. fine. That's okay. And just saying we understand, you know, in terms of politics, just bear this in mind when you're acting on on our behalf and on a federal level or, or, or as a governor that this is what we've already adopted and we're already preserving and whether it's sustainability or you okay. know it's it's just basically reiterating what we're doing existing saying, partnerships that and we just have. saying whatever you can do to help us yep. on the federal level no no direction to the president or cabinet appointments just basically outlining this is Arlington this is our community can you help us up out and protect us and keep us safe so protect us from what Pardon me? Protect us from what? To ensure that we continue to continue to receive funding we already have, or if okay. there are future possibilities for funding that becomes available. I thought I heard protect us from some of the appointments that are coming up. And no, so we're forth. not getting involved in that at all. Okay. All right. Not at all. But still, uh, take my name off if you could put a footnote. I wasn't going to put it on, I promise. Okay. Okay. No, no. Put, put my name on. That's a footnote that I don't. No, no. We, we're going to do something from the Board of Selectmen. You can definitely get a copy and feel free to if you want to send okay. to the exact same people. No. But I don't want to get into a back and forth. So Okay, um, that's fine. But in terms of getting the word out, I have, I have the telephone numbers of all my reps, and I'm ca I call them constantly on different things just to let them know where I am. And that's, that's an opportunity for any citizen in town that wants to get his opinion out or has a position on something, you can go stand in front of a supermarket or the post office or something with a clipboard with, for people to sign for your statement, and then you send your statement in. But I don't think it, anything ought to come out of the town in terms yeah. of that. But okay. we're just responding to something from a resident, similar to when you right. pointed out issues to us with NSTAR, now Eversource. We could have said, call 1-800-588-8000. You're welcome to call them and inundate the phone lines. But when you brought very valid safety concerns to us, we took the extra step and we did contact his, I know myself and others did it. So this is the same thing. So um, okay. I, I just want you to, we're tr treating everybody the same. We, we had a request. Uh, we're not doing what the original proponent asked us to do, but um, I feel what we do owe any resident who contacts us is a discussion. Right. And out of that discussion, we either decide to do something or nothing. Okay. So, thank thank you. you. Did someone have the hand up? Sure. Just name and address for the record. <laughs> Sorry. Joan Goldsheit, Mass Ave and Heights. I just wanted to say I strongly support this idea. I think that many of us are feeling a little exhausted about having to call and call and call and call to express our opinion on all of this 
laundry list of things that we feel might be threatened. And um, so as one of your constituents, I love the idea. Uh, you know, we, we have voted for you. You know what we support and what we're concerned about. And I love the idea of you saying, here, here are the, the town of Arlington's values, and here are how we are putting them in place, and we really look forward to your support in, in their success in the future, so. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Dunn, any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now have uh, before us language in a discussion regarding a possible ballot question for recreational marijuana. Um, I don't know if Mr. Chapterlain or Attorney Heim. Attorney? Heim? Sure. Uh, I want to make clear at the outset of this, this is not, uh, I'm not articulating an opinion as to whether or not <coughs> recreational marijuana should or should not be uh, legal for sale in Arlington. This is merely to present the options before the Board of Selectmen and the larger community for regulating or not regulating uh, the sale of recreational marijuana. The uh, issue that I want to highlight the most for the board is that there is not a clear path forward to either end at this point in time. Uh, the way the ballot question was posed and the uh, way the law currently stands, it requires a vote of the voters to pass a town bylaw restricting the sale of marijuana. Well, those two things are not entirely congruous. There's not, we don't normally have a vote of the voters to pass a town bylaw. Uh, nor does, and when we have a vote of the voters, we don't usually go back to town meeting about it. There are some specific statutes that call for that process. We actually talked about one of them earlier today with the uh, conversion of the treasurer position. But at this point in time, it's not clear uh, what exactly we'd have to do if we wanted to prohibit sale of recreational marijuana in Arlington. So the options that the board has is it could take a conservative approach and say, well, we want to put something on the ballot for this town election anyway under the non-binding policy question, but we wouldn't be sure that that would actually meet the requirements for eventually prohibiting sale of marijuana or not. Obviously, if we put a public uh, ballot question out there saying, what do you guys think? And the town said, we want legal recreational marijuana sales in Arlington, that kind of sends a strong signal at the very least, um, but we can't really be sure. The, the governor recently uh, signed a bill extending the period of time by which uh, the Cannabis Control Commission would start processing applications from this fall to next April. So that's good news. We're hoping uh, from the Mass Municipal Lawyers Association perspective that the uh, state will clarify um, it's rules so we don't end up in a situation like we did with DPH and some of these issues with medical marijuana facilities. <coughs> I'm happy to answer any questions I can, but at this point in time, your options are wait and see if something becomes clear in the future or pursue actions either at town meeting or the ballot or both that may or may not actually be satisfactory for resolving this question. Okay, and I just as a, unless Mr. Chaplain had. I, can I add one thing? Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe if the board did want to put a ballot question, a non-binding ballot question on in April, they have until February 24th per That's memo right. to do so? Yep. Um, and, and this came out of conversations with the manager many weeks ago um, when a lot of things were clarified and there was a timeline in place and the manager said the board may want to discuss, um, since the vote was closer on recreational versus medical marijuana and I said I'd be happy to put this on the agenda my personal opinion right now is especially of most recent weeks where um, everything's even gotten further muddied um, from DPH and all the other um, agencies that are coming out with a lot of ambiguous language that basically um, you know whether you read the Glo globe or the uh, alerts that we get from um, the state agencies and entities that deal with this. Um, at this point, I wouldn't, and I want to hear from my colleagues, propose putting a ballot question forward, because I feel like if there should be one, we only have one bite at the apple, and we should know all the facts with clarity, because when these new questions that were on the table, some came up last year in August, um, when we were going through ARB and uh, medical marijuana, and as a result of statements from that state agency, um, it added another la la layer of um, uncertainty. And now, w within the past two, three weeks, there's even more questions and more things have been opened up. So 
At this point, I wouldn't advocate for putting a, a ballot question on because we don't actually know what the rules are. It may come out that the, everything gets worked out and it's, it's within uh, parameters that we're comfortable with and we don't need any uh, questions on it. Um, originally, when everything was laid out, um, it made sense. So for me right now, I, I'd like to hear from my colleagues, Mr. Dunn and others, um, in terms of where you'd like to go. Uh, there is no path forward. There is no urgency. I move receipt of the correspondence from the Board of Health and the Town Council. Move received by Mr. Dunn. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Kiro. Uh, is anyone here to speak to this? Any further questions or comments by my colleagues? Move receipt by Mr. Dunn. Seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Next we have, um, <coughs> I want to thank the town manager in terms of, uh, once again, um, forming your duties as our chief big person on top <laughs> in terms of uh, getting the budget materials out, um, getting them out through the town website and, and uh, through news media online and, and printed ink. Um, originally, Mr. Chatelain had said to me, oh, I can do, just do a quick five minute um, presentation on this, but I did ask him to maybe give us a 10 or 15 minute presentation or, uh, to me this is an important um, item to have, not only that we're not all immer immersed in it, we are, but um, a lot of people do watch this, do go into the links we provide afterwards, and I think this is a good precursor for when we, um, we already have this information out, but then we put it out in its entirety, and it will aid us in terms of when we're talking to people who have questions on the 2018 um, budget. So um, I did ask Mr. Chapdelaine for more than five minutes. So, Mr. Chaplain, be careful, and me asking be careful you for what more you ask for. than five minutes. But to me, we all know this is a very important um, issue with the town, especially with what we'll be moving forward with in the future. Mr. Chapdelaine. Great. Right on, right on cue. Sean has the, the presentation <laughs> up. Um, ju just to begin, thank you, Madam Chair. And um, l l like you said, I, I think for the benefit of the board, the benefit of those in attendance, although it seems most have left, I won't take that as an insult. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> uh, and, and for those watching at home, uh, I think talking a little bit about the budget process is an important thing. So thank you for indulging me the time. Uh, so if you could go to the first slide, Sean. Uh, we're going to go over the budget process, um, where we start and hopefully where we end and then start again. Uh, give a brief overview of the budget. Talk about broad strokes, revenue and expenditures, looking at FY17 and FY18. Uh, I'll then provide the board some of the departmental highlights, specifically how we got to our education funding proposal uh, that's included in the budget submission, uh, as well as some of the key investments we made um, in responding to community needs in town departmental budgets. Uh, I'll provide a brief long-term outlook, looking at our long-range plans, some of our long-term liabilities, and some of the big projects that we've been talking about but we haven't yet put a funding plan in place for. Uh, and then talk about next steps and then obviously answer any questions or discuss any matters uh, with the board. If you go to that, the next slide, Sean. Thank you. Uh, so the budget process, uh, as we outline in the financial plan every year, um, really you, you could carve it in a couple different ways of where it kicks off, but to start at the beginning of the fiscal year, as we all know, uh, the towns, um, or all cities and towns in Massachusetts and the states, uh, fiscal year begins on July 1st. Um, Shortly thereafter, in September, we have all departments submit their capital budget requests to the town manager's office, which are then funneled to the capital planning committee for processing over the course of the fall. In November, by the end of November, we have all operating budget requests due to the town manager's office, uh, which is initially uh, processed within the town manager's office and then issued uh, on January 15th to the Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee, and that's the book that was uh, provided last week and really is at the core of what we're gonna talk about here tonight. Uh oh, Bram's Bram's oh, gonna have to do some work. Yeah, you, you can go. You can go back one, Bram. Um, moving forward from here, uh, really starting actually February first through April, the finance committee will hold hearings on the budget, have uh, discussions with departments, have myself, the deputy town manager, and others before them to answer any key questions they might have. Uh, then in March, uh, primarily driven by when we get uh, the group insurance rate set on March first. Uh, we'll then create the more detailed financial plan um, and submit that to the Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee as well as make it available to the general public. Uh, in April, 
Uh, we've hopefully by that point reconciled everything that's been proposed by the town manager along with the finance committee and that's all put into the finance committee's report to town meeting um, for, uh, for their consideration. Uh, again, hopefully in May, the town uh, meeting is able to opera, uh, excuse me, um, adopt the operating and capital budgets. Uh, and then on J uh, June 30th, the fiscal year ends and the whole process starts again. Moving forward from there, um, again, as I mentioned, I'll give a brief uh, overview of revenue and then oh, a brief overview of expenditures. Oh, if you sorry. could go back one. Thank, Thank you. you. So I, I apologize. I know it's a, a little small trying to fit it all into one slide. Um, so you see um, we have... On the revenue, we have the property tax, local receipts, state aid, subset of state aid, school construction aid, free cash, other funds, um, and we're missing a label, excuse me, for override stabilization fund being the last revenue source depicted here on this chart. Um, the two columns are FY17, FY18, the monetary change, and then the percentage change as you go across the chart. Uh, the first line, property tax, that contains uh, a two and a half percent increase as allowed under the Proposition two and a half uh, statute. It also includes um, $650,000 in new growth. Uh, those board members that are members of the Long Range Planning Committee are familiar with um, a recommendation that's been um, adopted and moving forward this year where we're using the 10 year average of new growth uh, in the next budget planning year and then we're ratcheting it down in $50,000 increments over the course of the long range plan to try to hedge against an economic slowdown that would have an impact on our, on our new growth. Also contained within the property tax line are monies that are being raised via debt exclusion. Uh, so you will see over future years uh, those debt exclusions that we talked about under the senior uh, property tax programs begin to inflate that figure. Below, we have local receipts. Uh, that is primarily driven by motor vehicle excise tax collections. That's almost half of that um, near $9 million figure you see in FY17. The remainder are departmental receipts, uh, parking violations, parking meter fees, rental income we receive from properties we rent out, uh, and really any other fee we collect that's not tax-based uh, in the town, or pro excuse me, uh, real estate property tax-based in the town. Uh, historically, um, we had started with increasing that line item by $50,000 increments. Last year, in, uh, increased that increment to $75,000. This year, after meeting uh, with what we call the Revenue Working Group, members of the Finance Committee, uh, as well as the Treasurer, the Comptroller, myself, the Deputy Town Manager, looking at historical collections, we felt comfortable bumping that revenue increment up to a, a $100,000 increase going into FY18 and then beyond that as well in the Long Range Plan. State aid, you see a total projected increase of 2.3%. State aid is primarily unrestricted general government aid, as well as Chapter 70 and a few other smaller accounts that are on what's called the cherry sheet that comes from the state. Uh, we budget 1% increases in uh, general government aid. And then for uh, Chapter 70, which is the education aid, we look at how many new students uh, have come into the district in the prior year, and we multiply $1,500 by that which past history has shown seems to be just about the right metric for how much new aid students bring in along with them. On Saturday at the MMA annual conference, uh, the governor announced that he would actually be incre uh, increasing unrestricted general government aid by 3.9% to match with projected growth in state revenue. So that's just about $211,000 more than what this budget actually contained uh, for uh, unrestricted general, uh, general government aid. So that, that's a very good thing. He announced also that Chapter 70 would be going up by a gross $90 million. However, until we see that funneled through the formula, uh, it's hard to tell exactly what that means for us. So we'll know more at the latest by Thursday when the governor's budget is officially released with all of its detail. Below that is school construction aid. Those are monies we receive from uh, the program that was in place before the MSBA, before the Mass School Building Authority. Uh, it was called the SBAB, uh, and back then, they would basically pay down debt service with us as opposed to paying in real time as they do now. And these are the remaining payments we're receiving for prior projects. Between FY17 and FY18, um, in FY17 effectively, they'll have made their last payment for the Otteson School. So that goes away in FY18. Uh, and then if we looked at um, future looking documents, we'd also see that starts to go down over the course of the next four years until in, in fact by FY2022, I believe it's all, all gone. Free cash, the town has an operating policy of using 50% of its certified free cash as an operating revenue. 
Uh, we're still waiting for the comptroller to have uh, free cash certified. Uh, however, um, based on his estimates, we feel comfortable using a, a status quo estimate from last year. But when that number becomes available, we'll update that through the process. Other funds are representative of funds that we take from the overlay fund. Uh, that's the money that's put aside for abatements uh, or potential abatements uh, against tax assessments. This year, you'll see the increase of $400,000, and that is specifically tied to we are coming up on our nine-year revaluation process that we have to go through, and uh, the assessor's office has received some quotes of how much that will cost. Uh, the high end of those quotes are $400,000. So corresponding to that revenue increase is an expense ask to fund that, uh, and we want to take that money from overlay. Uh, the assessors feel comfortable that, uh, with that. We'll still be working out some details, but that's why you see that jump uh, in that revenue line. Uh, and again, I'm sorry for the mislabeling, but that final line is the override stabilization fund. Uh, this is the first year since the override was passed uh, for fiscal year 2012 and calendar year 2011 uh, that at least this proposal is asking to take money out of the override stabilization fund. Um, as you heard me say earlier, unrestricted general government aid is coming in higher than projected. Uh, depending on where free cash is certified, that number could be very, very small, if not be eliminated uh, by the time we get to making a recommendation to one, town meeting. One question. Um, if this still exists, and where is it in here? I know um, we made a policy decision uh, several years ago to the, I'm going to get the acronym or name wrong. It was a municipal building trust fund that had several million dollars in it and had been pretty stagnant for many, many years. And then there was a policy decision to take a certain, certain percentage of that every year. I want to say anywhere from 150 to 250,000. Do you know the account yeah, I'm so referencing? Yeah, there, is we, that we, in there somewhere or is that all gone? It, no, no, there's still, uh, so there is a municipal building insurance trust fund or municipal, mm -hmm. municipal building insurance trust fund. Uh, my understanding is it was set up long before I was here, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, my understanding is it was set up uh, so that we could maintain high deductible property insurance programs. So right now, our property insurance on our buildings has a de uh, deductible of $100,000. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you have a, a sum of money around to be able to fix up smaller claims that might happen because you're not going to hit that deductible. Um, I believe there's just about $750,000 left in that fund. And what the practice has been since I've been here is to take, and I can't tell you I know why this number is this number, but $20,625 out of that fund on an annual basis and use that to offset our property insurance bill that we pay to the insurance company. So that actually so doesn't show up as a revenue. Okay. It shows up as an offset okay. within expenditures. All right. I apologize. But, but you're, but you're right about that. Okay. Thank you. If we go to the next page, Sean. Uh, the next page is a breakdown, again, uh, a higher level look at expenditures. Um, you see the first line is municipal departments. Uh, municipal departments are actually um, in this budget uh, budgeted to grow at 3.15 percent. I don't get the benefit of the rounding there when it goes up to 3.2 percent. <laughs> um, the Long Range Planning Committee had agreed that um, town budgets uh, could go up to 3.25 percent. So this budget, as proposed, is coming in under that recommendation. The school department budget, you see, um, is projected to go up by 6.57 percent. Again, rounded there at 6.6 percent. Uh, th the next slide gets into more detail about how that actual school number is calculated. Below that, we have the Minuteman School. You see a pretty significant increase um, in that assessment. Uh, that's primarily driven by um, less in-district students uh, being part of the calculation right now uh, and operating under the new regional agreement. The actual amount of money we're paying to the Minuteman School is greater than this amount you see here, uh, but there is a portion that is actually the first tranche of the excluded debt uh, for their building project. Uh, they've already issued bonds, but we've put that into the capital uh, capital budget. Mm -hmm. I should also mention we, we are showing that back on the revenue page as being raised in FY18 uh, on, the, um, on the tax rate. Below that, we have non-departmental, uh, which is health care and pensions. Uh, health care, we budget at five and a quarter percent, but as we start to go through the budget process, uh, we start to actually hone in on the amount of contracts, the amount of people on health insurance that we think we have. Uh, so the number is actually under 4% as we look at it today. Pensions, we have an agreement with the retirement board to keep that at or below 5.5%, which they've committed to. So that you see there the cumulative number is a 4.6% <coughs> rate of growth. 
Capital planning, um, you see the total of 10.9 million uh, down slightly from, from last year's budget. Uh, capital budget annually is supposed to be 5% of operating revenues and then over the course of the five year capital plan should also balance out to 5% of the total revenues. Uh, so that figure, um, again, if we're looking at the capital plan, fits into that criteria uh, as, uh, as advised by the capital planning committee. Below that, you see the MWRA debt shift. Um, well aware the board has talked a lot about this, and I've talked a lot with Mike Rodemacher in the Water and Sewer Department about starting to look at ways to lower this. And we could either begin that through this budget process or through the next budget process, depending on when we actually think some of the debt exclusion impacts will start to hit. Uh, one thing Mike Rodemacher has also done that I can share under another agenda item of the board is starting to look at what the ratepayer impacts would be of backing off this um, taxation. Um, so, but at least for this budget presentation, that figure is still contained there. And, and could on that, Mr. I think it was you, Mr. Dunn, that raised, was it around this point yeah, with the I manager? Uh, I, so I would be guided in terms of whether, it doesn't have to be tonight in terms of what process to start when on that. Um, I would, but that was what you were talking about? Yeah, um, I guess I had been under thinking that we would tackle it in June when we set the water rates, I think. Town manager is saying he's going to like the, the, he and Mike or Ron Mike are working on it, and I look forward to it. I definitely I, I am a strong advocate for reducing mm -hmm. that number, mm -hmm. and I it, I've held off while the budget while the water rates are going up so much, but they've leveled off, and mm -hmm. I think it's time it's it, it's more fair as a policy thing to change that. Could I, with my colleagues' um, permission, appoint Mr. Dunn officially to um, sort of parlay that sure. forward and be the steward of that, and with you and the town manager. Let the future chair of yep. the board of, or if I'm still chair by then, um, <coughs> when, 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 what should happen to be an agenda item. So we're now going to officially sort of stop That's moving good. on Sounds that. Good to me. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, please. please. Thank you. Uh, moving down from that, you see the warrant articles line. Um, that's the line that has a number of miscellaneous warrant articles, um, the largest one being the OPEB warrant article that's contained in there. You see a pretty significant increase of 551,000. Mm. 400,000 of that corresponds to that revaluation process that I mentioned we were taking revenue from the overlay surplus for. Mm -hmm. um, there's also some further uh, funds for the zoning recodification effort included in that increase, as well as I'll get into a little more detail, some funds I've put in to support Town Day and other town festivals, as this board has talked about, uh, behind that increase. The next line, reserve fund and elections. Uh, that is, just as it's labeled, the town's operating reserve fund overseen by the Finance Committee and the elections budget. It's gone uh, down slightly this year because there's less elections projected in FY18 in the absence of any special elections that might come up, uh, and that's why the number goes down. It goes up one year, down the other year, sort of in alternating fashion based on whether we're in a state election year or just a local election year. And I would say if you could help us in any way possible in the future, it always gets me very frustrated when the Board of Selectmen's office gets grilled so hard uh, about elections. And if whatever way you can join us when you're at the Finance Committee, the cost of elections, it is what it is. We, we're constantly being, um, I shouldn't say constantly, but there has been a somewhat recurrent theme of really questioning those numbers. And I think, to me, those are some of the most static, firm numbers because it's so many elections by so much. So I don't know what it is that I'm not doing right or on behalf of the Board of Selectmen um, when it comes in terms of when people are looking at numbers and crunching them, but it just seems to me there's an awful lot of time spent with the Selectmen's office going over elections and, you know, how can we cut costs and, you know, it's, it's really, um, so you and I can have a future discussion on that. Maybe there's just something that I'm not doing right. And it hasn't just been this year, it's been since pretty much the past 10 years. So I just wanted to raise yeah, that, whatever anyway. aid we can get from you on that. So thank you. No, that's fair. <clears throat> the, uh, the next line is the override stabilization fund deposit that was made in FY17, corresponding back up to revenues. Uh, we're projecting to use override stabilization funds as revenue, thereby not projecting to make a deposit into the override stabilization fund for the first time since the override. Uh, Excuse me. <clears throat> that, we have non-appropriated expenditures. Uh, the lion's share of that figure are our state assessments. Uh, nearly, I believe, three and a half million dollars are our state assessments. Uh, the remainder is the amount that we pay uh, towards um, the SIMS debt service. We raise it within property taxes, move it into the urban renewal fund, but then account for it as an expense under non-appropriated expenses, as well as an additional hundred thousand dollars that we set aside for um, set aside for uh, potential court judgments against the town. 
The reason that figure has gone down from FY17 is we are no longer budgeting for snow and ice deficits in the non-appropriated, and that's why if you looked back to FY16, you'd see reserve fund has gone up pretty significantly. We, we're now putting that money in the reserve fund and not carrying it as a deficit to be raised, and that's why you see that reduction oh, good. there. Any questions before I go to the next slide? So on the override stabilization fund, the, um, so does that empty that account? Does that, or no, that's so what we're taking out of it, that's what we took out of it for 17? So 17, we put $2.3 million into it. Okay, so that's why it's, okay, that's why it's under expense. And so in FY18, we're talking about today taking $360,000 from it. It has uh, nearly $22 million okay. in the fund, which will support the town over the course of what would most likely be the next three to four fiscal years. Right. Okay, thank you. No, you're welcome. <clears throat> next slide. Um, highlighting uh, <coughs> some, some departmental oh, sure. recommendations that have been made within this budget. Bless you. Uh, this slide focuses solely on education. Uh, you see we have a breakdown of the education budget, uh, budget as it's put together uh, with a corresponding chart. Uh, so general fund, or excuse me, general education costs are increased um, year over year at 6.26%. The reason you see that larger percentage is year over year, if you go down to the growth factor line, we roll the growth factor into the base, inflate that by 3.5%, and that's why you see the larger percentage increase. Uh, special education costs are allowed to increase at 7%. The kindergarten fee offset, which you may recall from a number of years ago now, uh, was given as funding to the school department when kindergarten fees were eliminated, uh, and then Chapter 70 came in to replace those funds, actually in excess of that $970,000, and that's carried as a separate line. Um, and then the growth factor, is the amount of money that we budget to give the school department based on their increased enrollments. So the chart below shows that the FY17 enrollment growth as of October 1st was 242 students. If we take 35% of per pupil costs for Arlington, which was last year, or actually I believe that's the FY15 per pupil cost, $13,383. 35% um, of that's 46.84 brings us to a growth factor total of $1,133,528. So that brings the total increase uh, for the FY18 budget for the school department to $3,756,042, or a 6.57% increase. Uh, I think it's important to acknowledge that uh, I looked back at the past 10 years of educational funding increases in Arlington, and outside of the years of the override where there was some significant catch-up happening, um, this is... Uh, I believe this is the largest, if uh, near the largest, if not the largest increase that has been proposed in educational funding. I completely understand what the school committee and the superintendent are dealing with, with the needs they're trying to fill, and I don't want to minimize those, but I think <laughs> in an environment where we're confined by um, Proposition 2.5 and, and the amount of revenue we, we can grow, to be able to, as part of this plan, give this significant an increase to the school department uh, should be acknowledged, and it should be acknowledged as a significant investment in uh, the town's educational system. Uh, I also want to mention that, like last year, if the Chapter 70 proposal uh, that comes down from the state is higher than what's been projected in this budget, what I am proposing is that we give that difference in addition to what's being proposed here uh, today. We'll know more what the governor thinks on Thursday uh, when we see those, see those figures. And I thought that was a really important fact and asked the manager to highlight. Not that anybody was questioning um, but um, again, how we as a board operate, not only with the town manager, but our colleagues on the school committee, um, we both listen to each other's concerns and what yes, we have to yeah. deal with. So I did ask the manager to highlight that. He figured it out, I did it, and he told me. And so I thought that was a fun, interesting fact. So thank you, Mr. Chaplain. You Sorry was. to interrupt. No, no please. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, Sean. Actually, I had oh, one yeah, question. Yeah, no, Mr. Fine. I was. Wa I wanted to <laughs> see what you said. Did you did you say that the um, the DESI per pupil cost is FY15 per pupil cost? Yeah, I don't seem to have it listed here. I believe that I believe we end up uh, being in arrears uh, several years as they certify them. It may be FY16, and I'm sorry, I don't have that. Okay. okay. It's it's always act more years than seems appropriate right. based on when they Got it. when they certify. I, it sh actually, it is FY16 because what's happening right now. The school department goes through a process that they're still going through where they submit all their FY17. Uh, yep. Oh, Enrollment. No, actually, 
Yeah. No, it is FY15, because they're, they're still certifying FY16 right okay. now. Yeah. So we're still it, spending 17, and they're yeah. certifying 16. Yeah, so they, what, what, basically what it is is they don't certify budgets. They certify expenditures, right? which takes – right. you got to go through your audit. you got to get everything yep. done to get that. Yep. Um, town department highlights. Um, as was outlined in the budget message, I want to just take an opportunity to talk about some of the things that we're proposing. Um, there's been a lot of talk, actually. Susan Carp used the term age-friendly community. Uh, earlier tonight, that's an AARP program uh, that we're um, undertaking and trying to achieve a designation as an age-friendly community. Several other communities in the state have already done it. Uh, and I think the terminology they use is to make the place that you live or your city or your town friendly to people ages 8 to 80. Uh, so it's not just senior focused, but, it's, but it has a strong senior focus to it. So in the operating budget, uh, we've made an investment in increasing the social work hours in the Council on Aging in direct response to the Council on Aging's uh, appearance before this board asking for uh, some consideration and attention to the growing senior population in Arlington and the needs that they're presenting. Um, but I think it's also important to mention, and I, I mentioned here on the slide, uh, within the capital plan is the proposed investment in a renovation of the senior center, mm -hmm. and there's also the continued investment in um, <coughs> curb cuts and ramp upgrades for accessibility, as well as a new investment being made this year an increase up to $500,000 worth of sidewalk repairs, uh, also aimed at creating accessibility uh, and ease of getting around uh, pedestrian access in town. So though that, that might not necessarily immediately seem like uh, a senior-focused uh, investment, uh, I, think, I think it is. I, I, think it, I think it's a town-wide investment, but a senior-focused investment saying we, we care about providing you accessibility, livability, and walkability in town to try to make this a place that you feel comfortable living. Can I on that? Is it? Yeah. It's probably inherent in the public meetings that you've had. Um, that a, you've heard this, and B, it's being discussed. But the number one I th thing I hear from seniors, besides services, when we talk about um, the senior center and council on aging and renovating, redoing those bricks in front of the senior center, um, I've heard time and time again. Um, most seniors, nine out of ten, will say, you know, I trip on them, I, I'm scared to walk on them, the snow and the ice. So as you move forward, if you could, I know I do a lot of work in government center, and they've started to replace the old bricks that I've seen quite a few. I wear flats as a woman, but I've seen quite a few attorneys come in who had a little bit of heel that, you know, go and slide on that so it's not just seniors. And So um, have you heard that? Are we tied to those bricks? or? The, the designer has been hired. The design is being put together to. If you're talking about the semicircle parking lot in front of the council on aging, mm -hmm. uh, driveway, excuse me. Uh, the the plan is underway, be, being drawn up to redo that. That will eliminate the bricks from Perfect. from from the circle, not entirely from the area. I'm not going to hold you to that, but circle. as long as you're looking into it, because that's the number one thing with seniors when I go over there, they're like, look at this. I have to, you know, take my, you know, and it really is. And like I said, it's not just seniors. When people were going in there with strollers and stuff like that. It, you know, sometimes you need an extra help friend to, when you get stuck in one of those ruts of the bricks. I've taken my share of falls in the bricks. So <laughs> okay, you know, sorry. To I took a bit. Go ahead. Oh, okay, senior center. Uh, the next um, area that I wanted to talk about is uh, what I called investment in neighborhood protect, uh, protection. So the budget proposes adding a new full-time building inspector, upgrading the position of conservation administrator to an environmental planner position, and uh, transitioning the project manager position within the Board of Health Office under Health and Human Services to a director of public health. And these are really all focused on being able to tie into some of the recommendations that the residential study group is going to be bringing forward to town meeting in regards to um, residential zoning or, or residential construction, um, as, as well as meeting some, uh, some needs that have gone unmet, uh, unmet excuse me, over, the, over the years. The building inspector uh, and the director of public health in particular uh, will go a long way towards meeting up with noise abatement requests uh, as well as what um, I know this board hasn't had the opportunity to see it because it's not fully developed yet but the residential study group um, the primary thing that they're going to be recommending to town meeting is the creation of a construction control agreement maybe better called a good neighbor agreement that will outline in one place all of the town's bylaws and statutes that have um, governance over how loud you can be, how long you can work, what you can do, what you can't do, and how you have to keep your job site safe when you're working on um, a construction site in town. And having uh, specific uh, personnel that can go and enforce that uh, and make sure that it's happening, I think, are entirely key 
uh, to, to it being successful. And as compared to past years where proposals are brought forward, a discussion happens on town meeting floor of whether or not we have the resources to, to manage the enforcement of what's being proposed, instead this is front loaded. This is something we want to do. We're recommending it to town meeting and here's the resources we think are necessary to make it happen. The environmental planner will be somewhat tied into that, but more importantly, uh, will respond to some of the also growing conservation needs that I think the board has probably heard being expressed over the past couple of months. So to con continue to do the work of the conservation administrator, but also broaden that work to further protection of our natural resources and towns, um, probably primarily things like uh, Spy Pond, Mill Brook, the reservoir, uh, to be able to, to, to work proactively on planning measures to, to protect those assets. Any questions on that? Um, a note of a continuing investment in information technology. Um, uh, to be honest, I think there's a little bit of a catch up happening uh, with this budget proposal this year. We're proposing um, adding an assistant director of uh, information technology, <clears throat> as well as really changing a position uh, to a munis project uh, analyst, or munis, excuse me, munis systems analyst. Uh, we're, we're moving almost entirely to munis for both our accounting as well as our collections. Uh, we've been working with the comptroller and the treasurer, and having somebody on the IT staff to manage both all of the updates to Munis that happen on a regular basis, as well as account access and permissions throughout the system, uh, is really crucial to having an efficient and effective financial system. And that's why we're adding that, uh, or proposing to add that. And on that, um, if Mr. Carroll could follow <coughs> up, it's my understanding, and I've just been told anecdotally, that the um, interim, I don't know if it's CFO, her name is Tony. I believe she also, by and large, is using Munis. So I don't know if, if it, that oh, that's moves, all part of it. Yeah. yeah, if that moves forward, that she, along with Dr. Vody, should be included with that in case there's something that they um, something they can bring to the table in that discussion. But I'll leave that to Mr. Carroll and Mr. Chapdelaine because I'm ultimately, which I think is what is happening right now, which make me really happy is. Um, we're all talking the same language. It's Munis, and everybody's in the same reporting framework. So, okay. But I'll leave that to Mr. Kiro to hash out. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just telling you, I have not had a, I haven't even met this individual who I'm calling her by her first name only because I'm blanking her last name, but it's Tony. So Mertz. I have not Mertz. have. Tony Mertz. Mertz. Ms. Mertz. I have not had, I've heard other things, who people who speak highly of her who work with her. So I'm not stating that for a fact, but okay. Sorry. Go ahead. No, that's fine. Um, uh, the, the, the next uh, note is funding included to support Town Day Feast of the East and Arlington Alive. This is in uh, direct response to co uh, a discussion that happened at the, uh, the board's goal setting session as well as some follow up conversations I've had with a number of board members. Uh, what's included under warrant articles is $10,000 to support Town Day and that could offset the cost of police details, fire detail and public works time. I know it doesn't pay for all of it but I think it, I, I hope it's recognized as a significant investment on the part of the town to offset the amount of fundraising that needs to be done. Uh, and then there's amounts of uh, $2,500 a piece to help Feast of the East and Arlington Alive achieve those same, same ends. Obviously, uh, you know, that's still open to discussion with the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen as we go through the process, but uh, I did want to point out that um, that investment is being proposed to be, uh, be made. Not on this slide, but I think it's important to mention we did add hours for a part-time social worker within the police department to assist the existing police social worker, Rebecca Wolf, to even further improve the follow-up that we have as part of our opiate program. Uh, also, hedging against, given some of the discussions from earlier tonight, I, th I think the board knows that um, Rebecca Wolf, who's just been an amazing employee, is funded by a grant and is actually, by definition, an employee of the Edinburgh Center in Lexington. Mm. Uh, uh, that grant comes from DPH to the Edinburgh Center, and then she's assigned to Arlington. Should that grant funding ever be lost, um, we, we would need to scramble fast to replace that service. So this is, this is the, the police department looking at how we can both supplement existing services, but also start to plan accordingly for what you know is not a guarantee going forward. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I want to mention, um, with the good work of the library director, uh, working in cooperation with the Friends of the Fox Library, we are proposing in this budget to expand Saturday hours at the Fox Library, which I know Yay. has been a big community need, uh, oh, community right. desire in uh, East Arlington. Any, any questions on any of this? Um, moving to long-term outlook, you can go to the next slide, Sean. Thank you. 
Uh, if we look at the long range forecast, uh, the override that was passed in 2011 for FY 2012 uh, currently projects to last through FY 2020. Uh, a good portion of those override stabilization funds will be used in FY 21. And this budget uh, projects a deficit in FY 21 of $4.6 million. Uh, before we get there, that number will uh, go up and down based on a number of different assumptions uh, that we might make. Uh, but as we sit here today, uh, there's no anticipation of needing to ask for an override before FY 2021. I um, want to note that in this budget proposal, uh, the town continues to invest in its long-term liabilities, both pension and OPEB, um, putting nearly $900,000 towards OPEB, which will bring how much we have in our OPEB reserves up to nearly $10 million. In terms of, as compared to the total liability, that doesn't seem like a large amount, uh, but we're, we're definitely one of the leaders in the state in how much we're putting into our OPEB reserves, um, which keeps the, the rating agencies happy which keeps us at a AAA rating and thereby reducing our borrowing costs. Uh, I think it's important to mention as part of the long-term outlook that um, we're in the MSBA process. Uh, we're soon to start the uh, feasibility study portion of the process with the MSBA for the high school. And we still have to have a lot of discussions about how we're gonna fund it. Um, I would imagine uh, there'll be uh, a lot of talk about a debt exclusion, uh, but I would also imagine it'll be a very large debt exclusion. And I think there'll be a lot of conversations to be had about what that looks like and how it's communicated to the voters. And then finally, uh, also <clears throat> within the theme of a lot of what we've talked about tonight, uh, the impacts of the federal budget and other federal policies uh, and what those might mean uh, remain quite uncertain. I, I don't know that there's necessarily a lot that we point to outside of community development block grants that would be direct funding to the town that would have an impact on us, though changes to that would have a serious impact on us. What worries me are major changes to Medicaid or major changes to state highway funding that have an impact on the state that thereby trickle down and have an impact on us. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't know what that looks like yet, but I think we should all be cognizant of that going forward, that there could be impacts on the town, not just Arlington, but cities and towns in general. Can I just ask on the high school, I have just a memory of receiving something, we received something recently about certifying a number and number that perhaps we the school were submitting was like 1600 something and the state came back with 1435 do you remember seeing that Joe do you know anything about that has there been some talk yeah, it was about the the, um, the enrollment number the design enrollment number yeah so the, um, we've been negotiating with the MSBA using the McKibben study mm -hmm. uh, to try to settle on a design enrollment figure so we've had a series of meetings with the MSBA finally settle, uh, settling on an enrollment figure so that's settled. That is, <coughs> so that number is what it is then. Well, it. it <laughs> well, oh, will the it, feasibility study give us one more crack at it? Or no? uh, it's it's not intended to. Okay. So it it it, it, it is at least for now uh, what it is. I, I suppose was there some significant data that came in over mm -hmm. the course of the feasibility study or before we went to construction. We could present that to them, though there's no guarantee that they would. Yeah. No, no, I'd leave that to our colleagues on the school committee. I just remember receiving something in the past week or two, so I didn't know how that impacted. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, and then finally, the uh, last slide. Um, next steps, sort of in coordination with what I uh, spoke about at the outset, uh, finance committee hearings begin on February 1st, or at least my, my first appearance before the finance committee, uh, probably giving a similar uh, presentation to what I did tonight and talking about <clears throat> some of the other warrant articles in general. Uh, as Dan knows, the Finance Committee sometimes like this, likes to stretch how much its authority has and <laughs> learn, learn, learn about what else is happening on the warrant, as, as is very much their right. Uh, also, as I mentioned several times, the local aid numbers uh, are going to be released by the governor later this week, and we'll continue to update uh, this budget with the Finance Committee as the governor's budget number comes out and then as the legislative budgets come out, first from the House and then from the Senate over the course of the spring. Uh, also mentioned earlier, the Group Insurance Commission sets its rates on March 1st. That allows us to really hone in on what the health insurance number is going to be uh, because we know how many people are on plans, what the actual rates of those plans will be, so we'll update those figures accordingly. Uh, and then finally, again, uh, we'll update all of those things, any other changes that are made through the Finance Committee process or suggested by the Board of Selectmen, uh, have those all updated through the Finance Committee and prepared for the Finance Committee report for town meeting. With that, that closes my uh, presentation and happy to answer any other questions that the board might Mr. have. Mr. Greeley. So, uh, finance committee meetings, you don't have to do all of those, right? Sandy can 
He's the chief budget guy, right? Uh, he, Sandy is definitely the chief budget guy, as uh, can be seen from his cracked fingers putting all the, uh, the, the budget document together. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go to the, I'll definitely go in, on February 1st to talk about the long range plan and give a budgetary update. Uh, then the finance committee breaks up into subcommittees and goes and meets with individual departments. Mm -hmm. uh, Sandy will be part of some of those and doesn't have to be part of some for various departments. Uh, and then uh, there always seems to be one or two key issues that the finance committee uh, takes a focus on and might have some more questions about, uh, which I, de depending on um, you know what other meetings might be happening, I may go, I may not go. Uh, but I, Sandy has definitely grown accustomed to attending finance committee meetings. And I, th I think they're growing a trust in him as well. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, move receipt. Move receipt by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Kiro. I know I kind of indulged and got my questions and, and my colleagues did also, but um, if not, uh, and I, I want to thank the town manager for um, putting this presentation together because a lot of people really do watch this stuff, believe it or not, especially now that you can stream it and queue up to it. So on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Kiro, if there's no further questions, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote, move receipt. Uh, next, the uh, town manager evaluation process. I just asked Adam if he could just outline um, where he sort of anticipates um, setting out a timeline for it, and then um, I think <coughs> it'll bring us into perhaps into April um, and as we get closer to that, we can either discuss whether current chair and or vice chair finishes that process sometime in the middle of April or transition it to the incoming chair, <clears throat> which I'm also as equally comfortable with that person. Whoever does the final step, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Chapterlane will outline with HR. Um, Mr. Chapterlane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so uh, as provided in the memo to the board, what I'm proposing for the board's consideration is that by February 6th, uh, I provide the board with a narrative self-evaluation and an updated goals document. Uh, the board could then take a month, February 6th to March 6th, to complete their evaluation instrument. Uh, on the same day, March 6th, they can transmit their completed documents to the chair of the board. Uh, the chair can then work from March 6th to March 20th with the HR director to create that consolidated document. And then I put a date of April 3rd for the evaluations to be discussed by the board in public session at a regularly scheduled board meeting, though I note um, my expected paternity leave. So I would, I would ask for the indulgence of the board with a little flexibility depending on when the baby actually arrives when we do the final report out at a meeting. I, I, it, it could be, well, it, it, I guess it, it doesn't help to, to pick dates because it could come early, late. And, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, That's why I said it made the boss part of the now. process. We'll deliver this evaluation oh, one yeah, way or another. Oh, <laughs> please. No, it's original thing. I'm like, you got a new baby coming there. But anyways, uh, is a motion move approval by Mr. Move approval. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further questions? If not, all those on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. I can't talk anymore. New business, Mrs. Kropelka? Yeah. Tony Hyde? None, thank you. Mr. Chapter Just seven or eight pieces of new business. Yeah. All right. I, 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 <laughs> I'm kidding. The man so, you take 47 uh, minutes. Come on, uh, I gave you the budget. <laughs> Friday and Saturday were the MMA annual meeting. It was a uh, very good meeting. Heard from the governor, heard from Senators Markey and Warren. Um, uh, not necessarily a lot of clarity about what's going to happen with the new administration, but uh, we, we know we have good people there fighting for us uh, here in Arlington. I want to mention we did win first place in the annual report contest. Oh, uh, so is that because no, you know. showed up? <laughs> I, I, I actually, I, I didn't stay to get the hardware. I, they'll have to, I'll have to yeah. go pick it up at some point. Uh, and I, I also just want to quickly mention that, um, you know, I, I think Ar Arlington showed very well at the MMA. Uh, Jenny Ray, the planning director, moderated a session on housing. Fred Ryan was on uh, a panel with Commissioner Bill Evans from Boston on community policing. Nice. Uh, sort of, and it, that wasn't just a session session, that was one of their super sessions. Uh, and um, both Jenny and the Chief just got rave reviews from everybody, so I think Arlington showed very well to the state uh, at the MMA. So I, I was proud and I, I would, uh, think, would think the board would be proud as well. That's all I have. Sure. Mr. Greeley. Uh, I just have one. It's. Um, you know, uh, we've we've talked a lot about um, the opiate issue, and you know, our chief of police has kind of become a state and national uh, spokesperson for it. Um, my daughter was in a uh, gas station, and a gentleman came up to an open window 
that she thought was drunk or something. Turns out he was uh, overdosing uh, and was, hey, you know, baby, give me a ride. Let's go out on a date and all this. And it scared her. Uh, luckily, the owner of the gas station uh, saw this, called 911. Within minutes, they were there. And um, Officer Chad Brown, I particularly like to, you know, and it's your own daughter, of course. I mean, uh, uh, it really hits home a lot more. But uh, so Katie was safe. The police were there. Everything was well handled. Uh, and the, the officer told my daughter he, uh, she probably saved his life uh, by the call and how uh, quickly police and first responders and uh, ambulances uh, responded, they the, knock him, they, mm -hmm. uh, and they really do believe that saved his life. It was a pretty serious overdose that he was going through, so. Uh, God help him, but, uh, you know, I really appreciate the uh, police and fire even more, you know, anyhow, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Curo. Uh, thank you, I just want to briefly, <coughs> that I, I did attend the Council on, on Aging as the board's liaison. Just two notes. Um, one, uh, Mr. Chaplin mentioned the Age Friendly Communi uh, Community Initiative. That is with AARP and with the World Health Organization. There are like five or six pages of criteria. And I think a lot of them actually intersect with work that this board has been doing. So I think we may well be interacting with that because a lot of it has to do with mobility issues, transportation issues, housing issues and such. So, so you know, stay tuned for that. I, I suspect we've actually I know we've actually already done a lot of the groundwork, probably with the, the um, Complete Streets Initiative and some of the other work we've done, but stay tuned. And I'm not going to explain this correctly, but I think it is very important to note. There was an issue that was raised that there is a time-sensitive uh, situation that affects some seniors who, um, if I understood it correctly, who um, have retired earlier and gone into exchange health plans and did not take certain Medicare benefits that they were eligible for. Later on, they um, are potentially subject to a, a penalty, a severe ben a benefit penalty. There's a deadline of, I think, March 31st for a Social Security um, uh, process, and I, I can't for the life of me remember the term. I just want to put it out there because I know that the council is scrambling to pull together as much information as they have on this to get the information out to impacted seniors. It sounds like it hasn't been very well publicized. This is another one of these areas where we really depend on the, our community depends on the federal government, but it hasn't been publicized very well and it could um, have a serious impact to a number of seniors that fall into this situation with a, a clock ticking to the end of March. So I, I don't know, maybe the manager wants to follow up with, with, with uh, the executive director. I, I know she, this was just a couple days ago that this was raised at their meeting and they, they are putting together some public information, but I think it's right. something important to get out there pretty widely. All right, thank you. Mr. Dunn? Nothing. Nothing. Um, I just want to congratulate Arlington resident Teen Charlotte uh, Kilroy oh, yeah. on her chopped championship, yep. um, not only winning it, and they said he, she yeah. used, I think it was yeah. aquafaba, an ingredient that hadn't been used before. It was something to do with peas and con condensation. Pea something. juice or something. Is that what it was? And uh, as well as from the 10,000, I think she's donating 6,000 of it to, uh, I think, the Trevor Project. So I want to congratulate her and her family. I got a Facebook posting from them recently. They said, we're cooking something up. Anyone come on over? I couldn't make it over. But with my colleagues' indulgence, if um, I could ask Mrs. Kropelka and or the town manager, um, just to reach out, and if it's appropriate, and, and she hasn't been before the school committee, I'd love to bring her in and just you know very briefly congratulate her and um, give her her Arlington's Chop Champion proclamation or something. Um, and she's also homeschooled, um, so kudos. I thought she was an artist in student, she, right? she was previously. My daughter knows. Oh, she her. was? Oh, okay. I think she's homeschooled now. She is yeah. homeschooled now. So, and it, they don't have to come in, but if someone could just contact the family, said that we'd like to relay our congratulations, we can just do it in writing, but we'd like to extend the invitation for her and her family to come in at their convenience to her future. And it'll be a quick thing. They don't have to stay all night like yeah. Brahm and Bob do. Um, and, uh, but I just thought it was a great feat, but I think it, the pay it forward aspect of it um, that she did afterwards uh, is really to be commended. So uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn by.
So moved. Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Grilly. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All aye. those opposed, unanimous vote. Good night, everyone. GIC, uh